and welcome one and all to the Review Bra live stream, the Saturday night Review Bra live stream. I would imagine that I am live. I'm pretty sure that I am. Half the time with the delay and all that, I don't even know, but I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to assume that we are indeed live uh, at the, uh, the the famous Review Bra Saturday night live stream. I made sure for that extra emphasis, I wanted to go all caps there and uh, just, you know, say Review Bra live stream. So uh, I'm sitting here, you know, I, I thought to myself, eh, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do a live stream tonight. It's been so long since I, I did one, at least, um, I don't know, it feels like it's been, you know, recent, but I guess it's been three months, which is pretty crazy. I think the last time I did a live stream was back in uh, 2018, and here we are already in uh, March of, of 2019. It's just, it's insane how, how time is and all of that. But anyway, welcome, uh, welcome one and all, welcome to the big, to the big show tonight. What is this live stream going to uh, entail exactly? You know, what's what's it going to be? What's you know, what's what's in it and everything? Uh, all that you're going to be getting tonight is uh, you know, it's just going to be a laid back show. It's going to be uh, you know, I'm going to try to be relaxed. And really, I want to use this as an opportunity uh, to just talk about the, the the channel. You know, what's going on, all that stuff. Um, of course, we'll take your questions. Like I said. The biggest thing about this live stream is really what's in the title, what is directly mentioned there, where it's miscellaneous talk, right, so I could talk about anything, and Q&A, so if you have a question, I may have an answer. Now, I'll, I'll just go out, I'll say it, you know, like the standard disclaimer, if there's something that, you know, I don't know, you know, whatever it is that I'm talking about, or I don't want to talk about it, uh, then I may not talk about it. You know, that's just common sense. Uh, so with that, hello to uh, everyone there in the chat. I'm seeing your seeing your messages. Hello, hello, hello to uh, all of you there. I do have the chat uh, set on slow mode, as it always is. You know, that's nothing new. That's uh, just the way the way that it goes in the world of live streaming. Um, so you know, one message per sixty seconds, just because. And I don't know if this is going to be the case tonight, you know, sometimes it is just a case-by-case -case basis, but sometimes it just gets too crazy and you can't see anyone's messages, you know, and, and that's how it is. So that's just why we got the uh, the slow mode. But uh, one thing, uh, of course, I think, well, I don't know if I said it or not, but I'll say it again anyway, just to, just to be safe, is uh, one good way, of course, to really get your question, your comment, whatever it is out there, highlighted and, uh, you know, really brought to my attention and to the attention of everyone else uh, is by utilizing the Super Chat feature. It's a good way, of course, like I said, it just, it highlights your message, your question, and it's a great way to support this channel and all that I do, including the radio show and the big podcast. So uh, before we kind of get into things, before we get into the real, the real talk, uh, we have a few super chats uh, that came in. Uh, let's just see who is uh, checking in. Uh, let's see. Well, there was one that came in at 8.57 p.m., but the message is retracted, so uh, hello to whoever that happened to be. Uh, AT checking in. Uh, thank you for bringing the podcast back on YouTube, he says. Uh, well, you yeah, know, it's, it's my pleasure. You know, that's, if there's one major change that I've been making to the channel, and I did want to mention uh, in the live stream tonight, and I guess I'll just go ahead and do it now since it's been really uh, brought brought up to the plate, or to attention, you know what I mean, is uh, the podcast. You know how in uh, the reviews that I do, and the, you know, I'll sit there, I'll BS around, and I'll say, check out the radio show, you know, get the shortwave out, get the, get, you know, find it on soundcloud.com slash vorw underscore radio underscore int underscore backslash blah blah, and you know, I'll try and try and uh, promote the, the damn thing so many times. I thought to myself, you know, maybe it was time to try and redo certain things, make a few adjustments, make a few changes here and there, make it easier to find, and uh, perhaps it's, it all comes down really to the definition of who is watching a better show. So what I decided to do was 
try and make it more talk-based as opposed to, uh, like, a music show, you know, and get it out as a podcast. So that's really the, uh, the biggest thing that I've been doing. I've been working, uh, I've been working quite hard on that, admittedly, and uh, I've just been trying to make it easier to find, easier to access, so I got the, uh, you know, the, the podcast now out on a lot of platforms. I made a special YouTube channel for it, you know, youtube.com slash V-O-R-W podcast. I got it out on SoundCloud, of course. Got it out on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Pocket Cast, TuneIn, uh, Google Play. Can't forget Google Play. And, uh, I mean, I've just been trying to promote it better and, you know, do a better job trying to take the show seriously. Uh, because, you know, I enjoy doing the podcast. It's a lot of fun to do. And I thought to myself, yeah, it'll be, uh, it's something that I just wanted to work on better. And, you know, I did have to make a few shortwave cutbacks, but that's just because the cost is too high, and the reach that you're getting for the cost was just too low to, to justify, you know? So, we'll see. The next thing that I might, um, I don't know, might do at some point is get the, uh, Maybe get it to, like, uh, where it's a video or whatever, you know, I know, I know that's the, that's the real thing when it comes down to podcasts, but we'll see, you know, one step at a time. All right, anyway, that was the one thing that I actually was going to spend some time talking about, and just because the first super chat was literally asking me about the podcast, I thought, ah, all right, what the heck, we'll just, we'll just clear it out of the way first thing, and, uh, no, we'll just go over to, uh, whatever, uh, well, whatever other super chats there may be. So, all right, what do we have? Who's checking in tonight? Uh, Dumpster Trash 420 uh, says, uh, Your content took me out of a dark place. Thank you for all the work and care you put into your work. It's appreciated. Well, thank you very much for your kind words, sir. It's much respected. Uh, sea Bear Memes, host meme review. Uh... This is going to sound very out of, uh, out of touch. Uh, I still don't even know what the meme... Rev I mean, I know, I think that's something that PewDiePie does, I think. I'm pretty sure. I would imagine it's self-explanatory that the, uh, you know, it's a review of memes. And, uh, yes, no worries, everyone. I did see the... I do see what, what comes in. Um, but, uh, host it. Well, the name is, uh, certainly applicable. See Bear Memes. Uh, David Palmer checking in. He says, uh, hello, hope you're having a fantastic evening. You too, David. Hope your evening is, uh, going great. I got up, uh, pretty recently and, uh, was just, you know, setting up for the live stream and, uh, yeah, you know, so far so good. Sometimes these live streams can always be, uh, a bit more on the, on the stressful side to set up because you get technical difficulties and whatever. Uh, but my policy toward them is any anything goes, you know. It is what it is, right? Look, if it all crashes down, so, you know, no, no big deal. So, uh, that's where that stands, anyway. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, hey, bro, I'm the dude that made the song about you, and after you listened, you said you wanted more drums. So here is my way of saying thanks for constructive criticism. That was from uh, K0WNTube. And uh, thank you. Thank you for your support. Uh, yeah, constructive criticism, you know, it's exactly, it's exactly that. Where it's not meant to be, you know, attacking someone. It's merely, a, a, really a suggestion in a, in a sense. All right, what else have we? Red Link Gamer 33 checking in. Hello to you. Um, Accutron, hello to you over there. He says, hey, boss, keep up the good work. Have you ever listened to Coast to Coast? Yeah, uh, I've listened to Coast to Coast AM, George Norrie, of course. Uh, I always enjoyed the older shows when Art Bell was the host. And uh, when he was still alive, you know, he, he had his own show for a bit, Midnight in the Desert. That was even on the shortwave. And I always listened to uh, to that that program, and he he did an enjoyable show. I mean, he was a good host, but uh, yeah, coast to coast is is good too. Um, oh, there we go. We got people in the the chat there talking about the meme review. I knew it. I I, I knew it's uh, that's uh, 
I don't know the right word to describe it. I don't want to call it a can of worms, you know, but it is what it is. Uh, all right, who else is uh, saying hi tonight? Um, this guy, uh, Riri Hart, um, please share your thoughts on net networks rebooting classic shows and movies. For example, the Mr. Rogers reboot, uh, Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood. Uh, I have no problem with that. Of course, some traditionalists, uh, in regards to that sense, may be upset. They might say it's not as good as, you know, the real thing. And I understand where they're coming from. But, uh, I think a reboot is, is sometimes necessary, where sometimes if you like the original, but maybe it isn't, as you would feel anyway, appreciated, um, you know, by a modern audience, a reboot is the way to kind of, you know, gain that, that, that sort of appreciation toward that content back. Uh, I have nothing against a reboot, though admittedly, not every reboot of uh, a classic series is, uh, is going to be good. You know, sometimes you'll, you'll see it, and it's terrible, and you're scratching your head, and you're thinking, what, you know, what the F did they do? What, who, who is even managing this thing? Uh, but, no, I have nothing against, you know, rebooting um, a television or, or whatever series. Anyway, who else is checking in tonight? Liz W. checking in, says, love you, review bra. Uh, Zerja says, I just want to be noticed because I need attention from you because I'm insecure. Well, you have been noticed. Uh, Chris is checking in. Hello to you, Chris. Um, says, what are your top three dipping sauces? Uh, well, ketchup. Um, gotta go with ketchup. You can't forget that one. Uh, I like the, uh, McDonald's, what is that, sweet and sour sauce? I think that's the one. That one's pretty good. That's solid. Um, Chick-fil-A sauce is good. And, uh, what's, what's the other? Well, I guess I'll give you four. The Polynesian sauce from Chick-fil-A is also pretty solid, too. So, uh, you got that there. Uh, Pepe Meme Frog. Glorious, uh, name. Are you a Jackson Brown fan? Oh, yeah, yeah, he's got some, some good music. Obviously, that was asked in regards, of course, to the series title, Running on Empty, uh, which is a fine song of his. Uh, one good song by uh, Jackson Brown, Boulevard, I think it's called. Uh, that was always a good, that was always a good song right there. Yeah, Jackson Brown, he's uh, a yeah, good musician. Uh, Michael Hopper checking in. Hello, Hugh, Michael. Um, let's see what else we got. Uh, Bibbidi Boop, writing in from Charleston, South Carolina. He says, the wife and I are big fans of your radio show and reviews. Keep up the great work. Thank you for your support and kind words. Uh, Jennifer Baker checking in. She says, is Michael Malice your father? I don't even know who that guy is. So uh, I would say very likely he isn't my father, considering that I don't know who he is. Uh, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure he's probably like some A-list uh, celebrity or some huge YouTuber or social media personality and everyone's saying, you don't know who he is? Uh, but no, I, I don't. I don't know who who he is. Uh, anyway, we also have a few more coming in. Justin is checking in. Um, can you get Wendy's to bring back that bacon maple chicken sandwich? Do you have connections? Uh, no, I don't have the connections, Justin. But, you know, maybe one day they'll bring it back. You never know. I mean, who's, who's to say? I don't think they're going to bring it back just yet. Uh, because it seems like it was just too recent when, uh, like when it, uh, since, since they brought it back, I guess that's the best way to, um, oh, the dude is checking in. Don't your parents send you, uh, to bed around this time? Usually they do. Usually, uh, they, they send me off to bed at around 8.30 p.m. Uh, but I, I've had a bit of a rebellious, uh, type of attitude lately, and there's some things to prove it. Number one, I'm doing this stream at 9.19 p.m., if you can believe that. You want to talk about a rebel, that's it right there. And secondly, I got the pens in my shirt pocket. No pocket protector. I'm wearing short sleeve dress shirt with a tie, and I even got triple pleated pants on. So that is the definition of a rebel right now. I'm going, I'm going through that rebellious teen phase 30 years through too late, and... Uh, Oh, yeah, you're seeing it. 
Um, let's see, Mike is checking in. You ever tried Tim Hortons while in Canada? I tried it once, but it was so long ago, I can't give, um, I can't give any, any recent thoughts on it. Um, Piccolo's daughter, you, you the man, thank you. Uh, RJ checking in. Great to hear from you, RJ. He says, um, good to see you. Hope you're well. Thank you. Hope you're doing well, too. Uh, <laughs> my wallet checking in. He says, are you the lurking legend? I would have to say that I'm not, uh, because I don't know what the lurking legend is exactly. Um, I, I would say that uh, I, I am not, under that pretense, because I don't even know what that is. So, uh, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that I am something. I don't even know what that means. Um, so I would have to say no to that. Arrow checking in. Hello to you. Uh, Red Link Gamer 33 writes in Coke or Pepsi, which is the best? I, I am a uh, I am a Coke, Coke fan. Coca-Cola, that's uh, that's my beverage of choice. My caffeinated, uh, my ca well, not even carbonated beverage of choice. Caffeinated beverage of choice, granted, is uh, Starbucks, which I picked up tonight. Uh, you know, going with the uh, iced, um, the venti iced vanilla latte. Uh, so that's what I'm going with. I'm getting my caffeine fix going for the uh, for the big show. Anyway, uh, what else have we? Uh, S Splash, uh, well, you know who you are. Says, uh, are you a gamer? I'm not a uh, a huge gamer. Lately, I've been playing the uh, mini clip eight ball pool. Recently, um, that's been uh, that's been my game of choice. Yeah, the, the mini clip eight eight ball pool. I'm still, I'm still going at it. I'm still playing, uh, playing that, and uh, yeah, it's just a lot of fun. It's not something that I take very seriously, but I, uh, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll go for it. I like doing the tournaments on that a lot, and uh, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just fun to do. All right. Anyway, what else do we have? Cody, Cody Leon says PewDiePie versus T series review. You know, in the end, I don't know. I understand where people are are coming from with the whole the whole PewDiePie T T series thing, which seems like it uh, it it never ends. It seems like five months ago it was going on and it still is, which is kind of uh, funny if you ask me. Now I understand why it seems to be such a contentious issue, because some people uh, feel, of course, that PewDiePie is uh, the independent creator. Whereas T series is the uh, the corporate machine, you know, and uh, people want to see PewDiePie um, have the most subscribers, and you know it's this whole thing that's going on. My thoughts on it, I'm I'm just completely indifferent to it. Uh, you know, subscribers are really they're just a number. When you look at a channel that has lots of some subscribers, you have to say to yourself. Of this extraordinarily large number, how many of them are active? I mean, for instance, my YouTube channel has whatever it is, you know, one point something uh, million subscribers. But of that large number, does every video that I upload have a million views on it? Obviously not. So, subscribers, it's all just a number. In the end, it comes down, in my, my humble opinion anyway, is uh, the activity of the channel, how active your community can be. Because there are channels out there with 5,000 subscribers that have a more active community than channels out there with 1 million subscribers. Uh, so subscribers, it's all just a number. And uh, it's activity that, that is really the most important thing. Eduardo is checking in. He says, I've been waiting for this all day. Well, I hope you're enjoying the show so far, sir. Um... Earl the Raw Hiker says, uh, did you get Randy Santel's shout-out um, on his video? No, no, I, I didn't. Uh, no one no one told me about that. No, I didn't. Um, that's, that's news to me. Jordan checking in. Shouts out to the inn at Northrop Station. Shout-out to you. Uh, Sparrow1222. Uh, what is the picture above my right shoulder? Looks like four ninjas battling. That's exactly what it is, actually. That's uh, 
you were spot on there. So uh, that's exactly what it is. You kind of you answered your own question, you know, and uh, sometimes that happens. Uh, Mostafa checking in. So happy you started the VORW podcast. Love the integration of listener questions. I was wondering, uh, do you do you plan on reviewing items in New York City when you're back in the Northeast, like Shake Shack? I, you know, I've never reviewed Shake Shack. I mean, that's one of those things that I can say that uh, might be a possibility, you know, at some point in time. But, uh, I mean, who's to say? Who's to say? Like I, like I say often, uh, you never know what the future holds. You never know what, what'll end up happening in regards to the... Uh, um, this one guy in the chat is just saying, do I have to pay first? So he reads, no, no, I read that right there. You didn't, you didn't pay anything. Just the best thing to do with the super chat, granted, is, uh, of course, is just a good way to highlight your comment, your question, get it out there, and support this channel and all that is done in regards to it. Uh, all right, on to the next ones. Um, Brandon writes in says, uh, how would you describe the ideal fast food experience that is beyond critique? Well, what do you mean in regards to beyond critique? Uh, because, you know, a critique can be positive or negative. There would always be some sort of, of critique, even if it's just only positive. Uh, but to be honest, I mean, like a positive experience would be something where you're getting good food, something that tastes good, something that ideally looks like what you're seeing in the the picture, you know, what is advertised. Not like a uh, a McDonald's burger that looks like it's glorious, and then when you get it, it looks like someone sat down on it or something. So, uh, you know, the uh, I would just say it's a good experience. You know, the staff are good, the uh, food is good, and I mean that's just how it always should be. You know, a lot of the time it's not, but. You know, that's, uh, I mean, that'd be the ideal experience, if you ask me. At least the food tastes good, you know? Sometimes I'll go and go to McDonald's or whatever, and either the drink tastes bad, or the fries taste bad, or the burger tastes bad, or something's been cooked too long or too little, or it's forgetting this or that. Half the time, it uh, just comes down to it should, should taste good. Plain and simple. All right, we got a few more coming in that I just want to get to. Um, let's find where we left off here. Uh, Polish GMR. I just wanted to say, hey, I really enjoy all your content. Keep it up. Great. Uh, and greetings from Britain. It's 2.15 here. Well, uh, hello to you night owls over there. Uh, Holy Ribs 999. Hello to you. Um... Manta, checking in, uh, do you prefer to sleep on your stomach, back, or your side? Uh, left side. Left side is the only way you can get to sleep. Left side is, uh, yeah, that, that's the way to, uh, to go. Logan, Logan Santiago says, I followed you on Instagram. Well, thank you, Logan. Uh, glad to know that. A lot of people still don't even, it's kind of funny, a lot of people don't even, uh, don't even realize that I have, um, I have Twitter and Instagram. I've had them for, I, I don't know, close to a year at this point, but no, I have a Twitter account at, at uh, twitter.com slash IamReviewBra and uh, Instagram.com slash IamReviewBra. And uh, yeah, yeah, I have both of those medias. You know, I've had them for a while. And uh, you'll, you'll get some, uh, you'll get some very glorious insightful uh, posts every every so often you know most of the time of course it's to you know let the world know that i actually do a podcast or a radio show or uh, you know all that stuff uh but like there was a you can't forget the classic this morning right you know i said good morning and i posted the picture of the crab you know that's a uh, boy that that was something else that was deep that was deep uh anyway Let's see what else. Joni checking in. She says, do you believe that Chuck E. Cheese resells uneaten pizza? Now, granted, that also is a very, um, 
uh, that is an issue that a lot of people are talking about, or had been talking about, of course, since the, uh, the Shane Dawson video. I mean, I haven't, I'll tell you this right off the bat, I haven't been to, t to Chuck E. Cheese uh, since I was a, a, a little child, and even then, I think I was only there twice. I think twice was, was it. I remember when I went to Chuck E. Cheese, now granted, this is talking, how long ago is this at this point? I don't know, 13, 14 years ago, you know, it's, um, I mean, it's been a while. I remember when I tried it, I was a kid, right, and when you're, when you're a kid, you're not really paying attention to the pizza or how uniformly cut it is. You see, you see pizza, and you're thinking, "Oh my God, it's pizza!" You know, I'm, so, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, to trying this. I thought the pizza from Chuck E. Cheese tasted, um, pretty, pretty good. I, I was a fan of it. You know, I, I enjoyed it. This is going back again, like I said, 13, 14 years. I don't know if what I was eating was from four weeks ago and was, uh, you know, recut, and they're putting someone else's half-eaten pizza on the plate. I wasn't paying attention to that. All I'll tell you is this, because I can't say it from personal experience. I haven't been to, to Chuck E. Cheese, and I haven't, I haven't set foot in that place in many years. All I'll say is that it's certainly, even if it is baked fresh, let's just, let us assume, for instance, that the Chuck E. Cheese pizza is actually made to order, right? They have a very odd way of cutting it. Um, but you know how places like to cut corners and all that. Uh, I wouldn't rule anything out. That, that's my views on it. But because I have not had the chance to try it in such a long period, I cannot say anything from personal experience. Kevin Kraus checking in. Hello to you, Kevin. Uh, Lizzie W80 writes in, uh, ranch or blue cheese on your wings? Neither. Uh, I actually just go with uh, usually just the buffalo sauce. No uh, ranch, no blue cheese. Um, I will go with the celery sticks. Celery sticks, those are those are solid. But I never use the ranch or blue cheese, and neither of them. Uh, just the sauce that's already on the wings, and uh, that's it. A big biscuit, like the name. Uh, I had nacho fries yesterday. It was amazing. Thank you for inspiring me to buy that. Yeah, it's a pleasure. I've always liked the uh, the nacho fries from uh, Taco Bell. Uh, you know, the first time. I gotta be straight up, the first time they released them was the best, then they were a little less good the second time, and they rose the price a bit, uh, but, you know, it's still, uh, I mean, they're still pretty good, probably one of the best things from Taco Bell, to be honest. All right, <clears throat> let's, uh, let's see what else we got going on. Um, Spicy is writing, Income play Fortnite duos with me, now I'm, I'm more of an eight-ball pool fanatic. I, I've never even played Fortnite, even though I know it's the, the huge craze. And I actually, I, I mean, I gotta give whoever was in charge of, of Fortnite, I mean, I gotta give them credit. Uh, that was a genius thing. I mean, I remember like a year ago, I was sitting here, I was sitting doing this exact live stream, and people were saying, um, whatever, like, you know, Fortnite this, Fortnite that. I thought it was a meme. I thought that people were just, you know, kind of screwing around, and it was like uh, Pokemon Go, which was the biggest thing for, uh, for about a month, and then it died out. Fortnite is still going, and I realize at this point that it is a very serious, it's a serious game. People take it seriously. Um, I still don't even really know what, what it is, but uh, no, I mean, I know that it's a legit, legit thing. Uh, Pete Burke. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Pratt knot, a.k.a. the Shelby knot? You know, all that stuff is, uh, is fine. You can tie your necktie the any, way, any way that you want to. Uh, when it comes down to tie knots myself, I always go usually with the half Windsor or a full Windsor knot, just depending on the tie, the material that it's, it's uh, made out of. Uh, though I still go with the old school four in hand knot if I'm wearing a wing collar or a, a detachable collar. Uh, just because that, that tie knot looks better based on that style of collar. But I'm always, I always just usually go for half Windsor or, or full Windsor knot. Uh, today's necktie, what am I going with? Arrow, Arrow brand necktie. Just a standard 
red pattern tie. This one I know I got as a bit of a gift, um, probably a while, a while ago. This tie has always given me some problems. I always have to get the small end tucked behind a little label. Uh, all right, who else is checking in? Uh, Adam, Adam Walsh. Uh, hey, John, do you like the Titanic movie? Uh, if so, what's your favorite character? Love from Cork, Ireland. Uh, well, Adam, you know, the Titanic movie, I mean, un unless they made a sequel to it, uh, was, uh, you know, it's been out for a long time. Of course I've seen the Titanic movie. I've, you know, I'm, I'm still surprised, actually, how, how, how many times they still even show it on television to this day. And, uh... I don't have a favorite character to the film. I just kind of watch it and absorb it just as one one singular thing. And and that's it. So uh, I don't really have a favorite character. Um, I just kind of take the movie in as, as just one, one, long, one long sequence. Uh, let's see who else we got. Um, Astral Walker. Uh, it says, good evening, review brother. Did you manage to try the funnel cake fries from Burger King? A review would be amazing. No, I never got the chance to try them, but, I mean, you never know what the future holds. That might be, if they still have them, I don't know if they do. I know they've been out for a while. I might, I might try them out in due time. Um, this guy says, shout out to Caesar and Mike, please. Big fans, shout out to you two guys. Um, Kevin, checking in. I figured out how to work the super chat. I love your content. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, let's see. Paul is, uh, checking in. Uh, he says, just curious, you ever receive any flack for having an alternative sleep schedule? Uh, you may hear things like, good morning, or should I say good afternoon, uh, from Paul and Suzanne, Savannah, Georgia. Uh, no, no. I mean, I don't look, I don't look too much into things like that. You know, I, I make it intentional not to, because otherwise, you'll see someone... And they might say, good morning, or should I say afternoon? And then you could get yourself lost. You could think to yourself, well, wait a minute. Uh, were they saying that as an insult? Were they saying that to try to, uh, you know, to, to try to be nasty? Or were they literally just being polite and uh, literally just saying good morning? And that's it. It all comes down to the tone someone is using when they're delivering a statement. Like you could say, oh, good morning. Uh, Sorry, good afternoon. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Comes off as casual. Whereas you could go and you could, you know, bang someone in the shoulder like that and you could say, good morning. Or should I say, good afternoon. Right? There's such a difference when it comes down to tone and action uh, that it all is, uh, it's all circumstantial. So, I mean, no, I try not to pay attention to that stuff because otherwise you could look into anything. You could think, wait a minute, you know what? No, forget all that stuff. And even if someone does does say that, you know, forget about them. The third shift is absolutely essential to the the functions of, of really society as you know as as we know it. If there were no if there were no third shift workers, if there were no night owls out there, uh, there would be lots of things that you know wouldn't function as they do to this day. So people with alternative sleep schedules are. Uh, you know, they're, I mean, it, it's, it's important. You know, and sometimes you can't control your circadian rhythm. Sometimes you want to have a normal sleep schedule, but you simply can't. Uh, and that's just how it is. All right, who else is uh, checking in? Um, have you seen the teaser for The Irishman? No, I, I, again, like I said, I might be out of touch with what's going on in the pop culture world at this time, but I don't even know what The Irishman is. Um... Let's see what else we have. I heart Jimothy says brilliance. Flavorful to us, ingredient is approximately equal um, to, to recipe. Very well then. Um, who else is uh, checking in? Yeah, night, night owls. I've always been a night owl. Just checking the time. I've always been a night owl, to be honest. I mean, even... Oh... 
I know I keep jumping from one. Yeah, Don, you, that's a good point. Daylight saving time tonight, 2 a.m. Set the clocks forward. Don't forget it. Uh, because otherwise that's going to really mess you up tomorrow. But yeah, daylight saving time tonight. Uh, but yeah, I've always I've always been a night owl. I mean, even when I was like a little a little kid, right? Before I ever even had any caffeine. I'm telling not even a soda, not a a monster or a rock star or caffeine pills or uh, Starbucks, right? Before I ever had any caffeine, I would find myself being up till 4 a.m. Not even with the intention of being up then, just because that's when I would be up until. So, I mean, my circadian rhythm has always been uh, leaning very strongly toward the night. And uh, that's where that stands. All right, who else is um, checking in on the super chat? Uh, Dylan Byron Foy checking in. Hello to you, sir. Um, Blumpo OG says, uh, you're a legend, bro. Thank you, uh, sir. Uh, Bree is, uh, checking in. She says, uh, do you ever get recognized in public? All the time. Uh, you know, it all depends, but a lot of the time when I do go out, I do get recognized. Um, you know, I do get stopped. Uh, a lot of people, they just ask for, uh, they just ask for, like, a picture. They say, are you the guy from YouTube? And I always say, yeah, that's, that's me. Yeah, you know, you got that, you got that right. But, yeah, I mean, the other day I went over to, uh, like a, I don't know, I think it was a Little Caesars to just get a, uh, get a pizza. And, uh, yeah, you know, you, you walk in and all the staff there behind the counter, uh, recognizes, recognize me. And they say, oh, you know, I got, I got to get a selfie with you, dude. And I say, yeah, that's fine. You know, get a, get a good picture, you know, I'll pose for the picture, whatever. I, I'm much more comfortable with that, uh, then sometimes you'll have people that'll try to take a, uh, you know, like a, uh, you know, a, a discreet photograph and whatever. I mean, I understand if they might not be sure that that's really me or not, or, or if they may have anxieties themselves, but it's just kind of creepy, you know, if you're sitting there and you have someone that you really know is trying to get a, 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 a discreet picture of you, it's a little unnerving. I remember once a few years ago, I was on the public bus, and there was this guy that was, you know, very, very obviously getting pictures of me, but not telling me, and it was like, you know, I mean, come on, I can see you there, I can see the way you've got your phone positioned, you're trying to get pictures of me, you know, just, just come right up to me and say, are you the guy that does the food reviews, and I'll gladly get a much better picture of you, in good lighting, and all of that, uh, you know, that's just kind of, I don't know. I, I could understand some, somewhat the rationale between doing that, but, uh, the, uh, you know, it's still a little unnerving anyway. RJ, uh, checking in again. What's your favorite pizza place? Uh, oh my goodness. Well, yeah, like you said, I mean, Papa John's is pretty good. The local places are probably the best at this point. The local, you know, like a local pizzerias, they do it best, the mom and pop shops. Uh, as for the main chain restaurants, not Domino's. Domino's, the only advantage they have is that they deliver. And sometimes their delivery operations have, uh, you know, whatever, better hours than some of the competition, some of their competitors. So, that's the one bonus there. Otherwise, I used to be a big fan of, of Pizza Hut. But then ever since they got rid of the, uh, they got rid of the, uh, the marinara sauce. Now it's just this pre-packaged absolute trash. Uh, that's been a disappointment. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not, not a big fan of that anymore. Papa John's is pretty solid. I gotta say, though, one place that has really been on the, uh, on the up is Little Caesars. I mean, they've been, uh, I don't know, it used to be very, uh, iffy, you know? Sometimes I would go there, it'd taste good, sometimes it'd be terrible. Lately, I've been going to Little Caesars, man, and, I mean, they're starting, it's starting to get, uh, better and better. I gotta give them credit. It still has its issues, but, I mean, I gotta say, for the, for the price, Little Caesars is solid. I gotta give them credit on that. Okay, uh, checking in, would you ever do a live mukbang? Uh, I mean, who is, uh, 
who is to say? Um, obviously, though, the mukbangs, you know, like a, one's definition of it, it's an eating show, so you got to really stuff yourself. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to exclude it. Uh, I'm more comfortable just doing the standard food reviews because I don't, you know, I don't, I don't eat tons of, uh, of food, but, you know, I mean, who, who's to say? Maybe one day it'll happen. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that's not going to happen. Um, Pepe Meme Frog uh, checking in again. Um, if I email you a pizza roll, will you review it? I somehow doubt it. Um, I, I find it unlikely, uh, though you would have to specify what brand of pizza roll are you uh, are you talking about? Uh, is it um, like what is it? Is it just your standard frozen stuff? Is it something that you yourself are uh, are, are, are making? You know what type of pizza roll is it precisely? Uh, Paul is uh, checking in. See, I'm not going to do that, Paul, uh, because I don't know the context. He says he wants me to tell someone that uh, she's mean and nasty, but I, I don't understand the context of it. I'm not going to delve myself into that issue um, without any previous insight. So I'm sorry, Paul, I cannot carry out uh, that wish of yours. Um, let's see what else. Uh, most of uh, checking in again. If uh, money wasn't an issue, would you ever live in New York City? What are your thoughts on the city? Have you spent much time there? Uh, New York City doesn't bother me at all. Of course, if money wasn't an issue, perhaps. Uh, though the one thing is the cold in New York. I am, it's so funny, ha having lived in New York for some time, the cold, uh, the cold weather still gets me. I mean, it's, uh, I, I don't know, it, it just, it's still... I don't know what it is, but the cold air, even if it's like in the 30s, yeah, you know, it could be sensitive, whatever. But, uh, I mean, it just gets me. I, I, I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a fan of cold weather, admittedly. Like, New York is great, I would say, between even parts of April, all the way up until maybe October, early November. But then the winter, I'm just not a fan of it, you know? Not a big fan of the, the cold weather. But yeah, no, New York City, I haven't any any problem with it. Uh, New York City is such a, a hub for so many things, especially the arts. Uh, it's, you know, no, I don't have a problem with New York City at all. All right, uh, let's see what else. Uh, Kira, Kira checking in. Uh, please hang out next time you're in New York. Uh, Laura checking in, do you enjoy contemporary art? Uh, I do, you know, I enjoy many uh, styles of art. One thing previously that I wasn't a fan of, that I've changed my my mind on, you know, was I remember back in, in uh, I guess, I don't know, 2014 or so, I was not a big fan of, like, uh, modern art, abstract art. I preferred the more traditional uh, landscape paintings. But at this point, I, I'm, I'm a lot more open-minded, you could say. Uh, contemporary art is, is fine by me. Uh, I enjoy even modern art, abstract pieces, uh, even the things that are open interpretation. Uh, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I just, I like art in, in general. That creative drive that comes behind it is a, is a beautiful thing, if you ask me. Uh, let's see who else we got. Um, John is checking in. He says, uh, please say hello and wave. Uh, to my wife, Rebecca Powell. So, uh, hello. Hello to the both of you. Um, <laughs> Ian uh, checking in. Uh, good evening, John. Favorite WML panelist? I would imagine that's, uh, what's my line? The old, uh, the old game show from, from back in the, uh, back in the, back in the day. I always preferred the original, what's my line? I always, uh, you know, my favorite panelist really was actually the host of it. Um, his name escapes me, but the original host of uh, of What's My Line, he was always my my favorite. There it was a show that uh, was really run with a lot of a lot of class at the time. Uh, Kevin is checking in. Can you uh, or can I get a shout out to Valerie and her puppy Rascal? 
We love the videos. Shout out to both of you. Angie checking in. Happy Saturday. Uh, happy Saturday to you as well. The, uh, the waning moments of uh, Saturday. But uh, happy Saturday. Happy Sunday to uh, everyone who is currently experiencing such a phenomenon. Um, let's see what else we got. Uh, short Stu F0888. Um, says, uh, have you tried the bacon, cheese, fries, or donut sticks at McDonald's? I've tried neither of them. The donut sticks is going to be the, uh, I, I mean, I might do a review of that soon. I think that's a breakfast only item, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, anyway. Cheese fries, just in general, I'm not a big fan of, I'm just not the biggest, uh, the biggest fan of, of cheese fries, you know? Some people like, uh, I mean, some people like them. Everyone has different tastes, but, uh, yeah, you know, I'm just not the biggest fan of cheese fries. I just, I don't know, I find them a little too messy, but I know a lot of people like them. A lot of people are, uh, big, big fans of them. Uh, the handicappable homunculus, uh, checking in, he says, you're one of my favorite food reviewer YouTubers, well, thank you for your kind words. Uh, John Don checking in. Hair gel, he says. Now, I, I don't use uh, hair gel. I use the, the Brill Cream, though. You could uh, you could probably call it the same thing. Uh, when it comes down to uh, hair, hair products, hair-related substances, uh, I just use the Brill Cream. Lately, what I do, or what I have been doing for a while, is I take a lot of water... I dump it on my head, I douse my hair with the water, and then I put some Brill Cream in just because it kind of, I don't know, keeps it a little more manageable. Uh, but before that, going back to the glory days of, of 2012, I, ki I kind of laugh when I say this. I uh, used to use the uh, LA Looks hair gel, and that was a hellish time. I mean, I could tell you this, I'm, I'm actually... If there's one thing I'm glad I stopped using, it's the, the L.A. Looks hair gel, because uh, that stuff was terrible. I mean, it was vile. It, uh, you know, it didn't even have that good of a, of a hold at all. I would dump half the, 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 the bottle of the, this, this just disgusting thing and, uh, you know, slather my, my hair with it. It wouldn't even get the hold. You know, I used to have a cowlick right here wouldn't even keep that down it would still be sticking up and then because it was alcohol based it would dry and then my hair would be like hard as a rock i mean it would literally be it was it was unreal i mean like you could tap on it and it would be a solid object i mean now at least it's soft you know back back in that time that stuff was was terrible um for my hair i'm sure if i kept using it probably half of it Aside from what's already probably fallen out, uh, would have fallen out even more so. Uh, but no, now I just use the Brill Cream, which I think is a much better substance uh, for your hair styling needs. If, if you want to go with the old school, you know, uh, whatever, the old school haircut. But the LA Wilkes Hair Gel, I was not a fan of it. Uh, confused Boy, I think, oh, no, con con Confed Boy, sorry. Um, said, what brand of suits do you wear? I don't really have any particular brand loyalty when it comes down to suits. I just prefer the older style um, suits just from the 80s and 90s. Even when I'm not wearing a suit, I still just prefer the older style uh, clothing. And it's not for any sort of uh, specific reason. It's not like, well, you know, I... I like everything how it was back in the past, so I'm going to try and wear things from that era exclusively because, uh, whatever, things 30 years ago were objectively better than they are now. None of that stuff. Uh, I just like the style. I, I just like the fit, I like the way it looks, and that's all that there is to it. Um, when it comes down to it, I mean, you know, that's just, that's just all that there is to it. Of course, by today's standards, the suits that I wear are going to look oversized. They're going to look ugly. Uh, they're going to look uh, out of style, old. And I understand that, you know? Of course, I, I, I know what I'm getting myself into. It's just what I prefer wearing. 
As I said, for instance, what I'm wearing right now is probably, you know, looks like an accountant from 1996. Where again, I'm going with the short sleeve shirt and tie, the pens, the uh, triple pleated uh, dress pants, you know? It's not done for any sort of reason, it's just that's what I like wearing. That's all that there is to it. Uh, Alright, who else is uh, checking in? Uh, Lauren is writing in, on the subject of outfits anyway. I'm a big fan of your style and aesthetic, sending a donation for another Outfit of the Day video. Uh, P.S. Could you please show us your pants slash shoes? Well, that message came at a, at a perfect time, so we may as well. Uh, the pants today are gray with a very fine pinstripe. I don't know if you'll be able to see them. Uh, gray dress pants. Uh, again, with the, the triple pleats. Shoes are my standard black shoes, but I am switching it up. I'm going with striped socks today. So uh, let me just move my headphones out of the way so I don't trip over them and destroy everything like the last time. And uh, let me let me try anyway. I don't know if it'll show up well or not, but anyway. So these, let me see, right here, there's my shoes. You can see the socks going up the striped socks and then these are the pants triple pleated i don't know how well that showed up on the camera because there's a little bit of a delay so let's see sometimes i just i just like doing this um i'm, I'm just watching myself just on the on the delay i'm just curious if it actually showed up at all or, or not let me see there i go i'm, I'm going for it did, did it make the cut? Let's see, I'm standing. Yeah, that's a per that's a perfect shot right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, looking good. Mission accomplished. Okay. Awesome. Worked out good. All right. So now you know what uh what socks I uh I have on. What uh yeah, what I'm going with. And uh Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's the socks, yep. Yeah, it was a perfect Perfect shot there. All right, we have a few more of our super chats coming in. Uh, let's see. Did uh, Manta checking in? Uh, did you know that the majority of calico and uh, torty cats are females? Uh, do you remember ever seeing or encountering a calico that was male? Uh, no, you know, you, you raise a very good point, as a matter of fact. Uh, that No, I mean, I'm sure that it certainly is the case, uh, but just, I imagine, in regards to, uh, cat genetics, you know, uh, yeah, but no, that, that, uh, that, that makes a lot of sense. No, I, I haven't seen very many male, uh, male cats with that, that fur pattern. Uh, Daniel checking in says, uh, shout-outs from Minneapolis. Uh, we love the work you have been doing. <laughs> we wish you'd, uh, run for local government. Uh, how do you always look so well rested? What is your skin regimen? Well, Daniel, I'm glad that you asked. Uh, believe it or not, and this still holds true today, I, uh, I made a, uh, video probably, like, a, a year ago. Well, it's over a year ago now. In, uh, late 2017, uh, actually about my skincare routine. It's literally called my skincare routine. Sorry about that. So if you literally want to see... I mean, you know, the whole the whole nine yards. If you say for some very odd reason, uh, I want to look like Review Bra. I don't think anyone's ever said that. But if for some reason that ever came to mind, I did a video where it says, you know, what my skincare routine is. So, uh, yeah, the uh, the skincare routine video. It's up there. It was very detailed. I mean, I... I uh, yeah, I mean, I went, I went all out there. So you could find it. Uh, maybe I'll try and get the link posted up there at some point. And uh, there you have it. All right, what else do we um, do? We have checking in. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, Lindsay checking in. Uh, she says hello, review bra. Lindsay and Mike here. Uh, big fans of the content. You should host a meme review. Thank you for your contribution. Uh, let's see who else. Sam, Samneva, checking in. Uh, hi, review bra. What 
piece of news or current development gives you the most hope for the future of humanity in a time of a lot of challenges sometimes it's nice to think about the good news around us you know that's the problem though i'll tell it to you straight up the problem when it comes down to the news cycle and this isn't about any of the the uh, legitimacy or lack thereof because nowadays as soon as you talk about news oh that's what it always is you know is it is it fakery? Is it not? What? It, you know, none of that. Forget that. When it comes down to news in general, the sad fact of it all, what do people want to hear more about? Do they want to hear about the story where, you know, whatever, someone's uh, pet was, was rescued from the tree, you know, by the fire department? Or do they want to hear about whatever, who got killed last night in, uh, you know, some whatever, violent, uh, violent attack, or, you know, what robbery happened, or whatever. Bad news sells. That's the sad, that's the sad thing about it. Even on a global scale, for instance, people would rather hear about some sort of armed conflict going on than perhaps, to some extent, a scientific breakthrough. Uh, bad news, um, you know, just, uh, death, violence, all of that stuff it catches people's interest, catches their attention, and uh, that's what people want to see. That's what's published, and, uh, you know, that's that's the way it is. That's the news cycle. Something bad happens, uh, people die, everyone talks about it for a little bit, and then everyone forgets about it and something else happens. Uh, that is the news cycle. Uh, but I still, you know, I still, I still check the news. Uh, lately, what I've been doing a lot is I listen to the uh, the shortwave. Uh, you know, of course, I check uh, Google News for the biggest headlines, so I know if there was an asteroid hurtling toward Earth and we're all going to die, at least I'd know about that. But uh, otherwise, I'll check the shortwave. And, uh, I mean, yeah, I'll listen. Like, last night, for instance, I was scanning around on my radio, and I picked up uh, Radio Prague, you know, uh, the the uh, the international broadcaster from the Czech Republic. And they were talking about some mining disaster, I think, that happened over there. Wasn't a single word about it anywhere else, uh, you know, until uh, I was listening on the foreign radio. That's the one thing that I like about... Oh, one second. A blue whale writes in, you only answer donations. I don't. No worries. I, I'm perpetually watching the chat. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I mean, the uh, the one thing, just to mention, I always like listening to the, the foreign radio stations on the shortwave, uh, just because you find out about news and whatever that's going on in other countries that just isn't talked about anywhere else. And, uh, yeah, I mean, shortwave radio is, it is dying. Um, I think it's past the point of, of no return, sadly. But, you know, enjoy it while it's there. Make the most of it while there is something to listen to. That's the brutally honest truth about it. Enjoy it while there is something there. You know, if you want to learn about what's going on in Romania or the Czech Republic or all of that, I mean, it's, you know, enjoy it while these stations are there. Uh, Matt says, do you listen to Radio New Zealand International? Absolutely. Uh, they come in great in the, the morning. Um... Anyway, if uh, someone was saying that a white supremacist donate to me, if they did, that donation isn't going to get answered. I'll tell you that right there, plain and simple, and they can rescind that donation. Um, uh, all right, who else is checking in? Uh, Andrew uh, says, uh, would you come and review Seattle? Uh, well, you never know. I mean, uh, Seattle is, uh, you know, is... Uh, it's a long ways away, but you never know in terms of traveling and all of that. Um, I mean, I've never been to Seattle, granted, but uh, oh, keeping it in uh, Washington State, uh, Linda says, could you give a shout out to my cat, Perry? Uh, we love you here in Washington. Thank you. Kyle says, uh, hey man, uh, love your work. Keep it up. Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, Chinchilla Dave says, uh, hello, caught you live, finally. 
I've heard you mention simulation theory previously. What are your thoughts on it? Are you a fan of futurism? Love VORW. Thanks for all the work. Uh, well, when it comes down to uh, simulation theory, all of that stuff, I was watching this last night, and uh, I, I was thinking to myself, the... Uh, no, hold on. Let me just... If, if, if I saw what I think it is, let me just... Um, sorry for the break. One, uh, one moment. Let me just... I want to block this person. I see exactly what you're talking about. All right. Sorry, I just had to... Yeah, I see exactly what people were, were talking about. That person's not going through... Don't support any of that crap. No, thank you. All right, anyway, what was I even talking about? I don't even know. Oh, futurism and um, all that stuff. Yeah, the other day, <clears throat> I was... Uh, yeah, I was, I was watching uh, these videos. There is so little that we even know about the universe. I mean, there's so... So minusculely little that we know about it. I mean, I was thinking about it, you know... For instance, even time, time itself, does time even just go forward, backward? Does it go in other directions? Are there many things that we don't even comprehend? Uh, does everything have a beginning or an end? Does the end have an end? <laughs> you know, uh, there's so many of those questions. There is no answer to. No one knows. Um, are we in a simulation? Who's to say? And, uh, I mean... There's just so little that we, we know about anything. In truth, I think, if if somehow all of the secrets to the universe, right, were somehow revealed to us, I don't think our mind would even have enough space to to process it all, let alone be able to remember it, pra practically most of it. Uh, so who's to say? In regards to futurism, that was something that I was interested in about eight years ago. And I remember I would kind of as silly as it is, I would look on, uh, I would look on Wikipedia, <laughs> it's kind of funny, and I would go and I would look and, uh, whatever, look up certain years in the future, and, um, I would look up, like, the 2020s or, or whatever, and I would see, uh, these predictions for, you know, what they think would happen in the year 2020, what they would think would happen in 2021, and all of that stuff. And, uh, you know, in the end, I would, I would look at that. It was very fun to think about, though now that we're practically in the 2020s, it's, that's an insane thought right there by itself. Um, half of those things haven't, haven't come to fruition like they said they would. I think it's a, a fun thing to look at, but not necessarily to take seriously. Uh, because there were some things that said by 2020... Uh, literally every single thing that you own is going to be smart, right? Like, granted, I got my smartphone here, and I got the computer, but they were saying, all right, um, the, the, the couch here would be smart, um, this bunch of bananas would be smart, you know, so you could watch the live stream on those, I guess. All the, the paintings behind me would be smart, uh, I'd have smart shoes, I guess this necktie would be smart, too, and all. You know, and they said that the proliferation of uh, smart technology would be everywhere. It obviously isn't. Are there certain things that you can do that can, you know, like a smart home, all that stuff? Yeah, but it's certainly not, not everything. All right, anyway. Uh, Just Ninja says it looks like you're going to cry. Oh, I, oh, I always do. That's just how I look. Um, who else do we have? Let's see. I just wanted to say my wife and I consider your work, uh, required viewing slash listening. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you. Uh, Mystery Machine 444, because you like art. And thank you. Thank you kindly. Um, Devin checking in, uh, says, uh, sup review, brah. Me and you share the same fave at Little Caesars, so I know you are legit. Well, thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yep, yep, you got that right. 
uh, <laughs> guy goes by the name Tupac, <laughs> right? Uh, he says the host was John Daly. Yes, indeed, that was the host of What's My Line. I always, always liked the way he ran the show. Um, let's see, Red Link Gamer thirty three. Have you ever been to Kroger? That's one of those stores that I never have been to. I'm I'm more of a bigger fan of uh, CVS or uh, Publix. A lot of those stores can be so inhospitable. I know the bananas, they aren't ready to be eaten yet. Um, are so inhospitable, so it seems. Like, I, I don't know what it is about some places like Walmart, but you go in there and uh, it's like, I don't know, it's so cold, it's so bright, so many people there. I mean, yeah, most people aren't going to care, but it just, it's like a very uh, intimidating atmosphere. Doesn't, you know, it doesn't give me much motivation to want to stay there and peruse the shelves any longer than uh, is necessary. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Adamantium West, uh, hi review bra, please wish Amanda and I a happy anniversary. We love you, thanks for all the classy content. Happy anniversary, you guys. Um, Jack uh, says, hey man, watching your content for some time. Really enjoy your videos. Keep up the excellent content and your unmatched taste in suits. You actually inspired me to buy my first suit. Well, thank you, Jack. And, you know, like I said, I am very well aware that what I wear as suits, uh, like I said, it's just, it's, it's very dated by today's standards. Um, you know, if you want to wear a suit, Granted, slim fit. That's the that's the biggest uh, that's the biggest thing that's in. I think it will be for a long time. Uh, granted, you look at the high fashion runways, and you'll see that uh, more fuller cut suits are trying to be, you know, uh, I don't know, whatever spread about uh, in the high fashion world. But that's not going to make it to uh, you know the rack uh, for a long time. So, uh, more likely than not, slim fit, if you want to look good in a suit by today's standards, slim fit is the way to go, because that's just what everyone wears. Uh, but otherwise, if you just want to do your own thing, and you want to get into older uh, suits, then uh, I would say online or thrift stores are the way to go. Cause the, the one thing about thrift stores that everyone kind of thinks is they, they see a thrift store and they think that every, everything there is just cheap garbage. Not, not true. Not true at all. You could find some very high quality items at a thrift store. Yes, there is going to be uh, literal garbage at a, uh, at a thrift store, but not all of it is. For instance, I remember I was at a Goodwill once, and I, re I remember there was one thing. Sometimes it'll make for a good, a good laugh. I was looking at the shelves, and, you know, it was mixed in with, like, the men's... Uh, shirts so i was you know sometimes i'll go through the shirts i'll see if there's like a good dress shirt that looks good or, or something that i might be willing to get i was checking it out i was looking i'm just you know moving the little hangers across and there's this pair of uh underwear you know completely loose just a pair of men's underwear uh just hanging there you know with a with a, a, a pants hanger just mixed in there with the shirts and i was thinking to myself I, that's disgusting. I mean, I don't know. It was, it, it was probably used. Uh, it was just, it wasn't in any sort of packaging or anything. And it was just so weird. It just seemed so out of place. And I was just thinking to myself, like, who is, who is actually going to go and buy that? I, I don't know. That kind of makes me just laugh a little bit thinking about that. Uh, all right. Uh, who else is checking in here? Uh, let's see. Uh, Stick Maker Man says, uh, greetings from Norway and good night. It's 4 a.m. here and I should already get some sleep. A good night to you, sir, and I uh, wish you a pleasant rest. Um, ENH 1984 said, if there's ever a reboot, you'd be a good replacement for John Daly. Similar vocabulary. Thank you. Very kind words. Uh, Ryan Winkle says, uh, hey, keep the channel going. Love the show. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, Brendan 
uh, says it's Jeff's birthday, so I guess hello to Jeff. Hello to all the Jeffs out there. Um, to all of the, the Jeffs out there. Uh, A.S. Uh, checking in says, hi, Jenny. So that, that goes to all the Jennies out there, too. Um, and uh, good evening, sir. Do you have a favorite candy? What are your thoughts on M&M's? I like M&M's. Yeah, they're good. That M&M's are some... Uh, that's some good stuff. That's some good, some good snacking, snack foods right there. Uh, lately, I got to tell you, one thing that I am a fan of when it comes down to uh, to snack foods, I might even, for the heck of it, just break it open right now. I got to say, your standard, basic Oreo cookies. Always a fan of them. You know, I can't, I can't resist, I can't, I gotta, I gotta have one. This is, uh, this has been my favorite snack food lately. Oreo cookies. There we go, freshly, freshly opened Oreos. Always a big fan of them. And you know, there's so many different types of Oreo cookies, you know, it's always, like, you get the, I, I, I just like the regular ones, you know, the, just the, the plain and simple, I mean, basic, but I like it, and I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm a big fan of them, like, you know, they got the double stuffed, and the triple stuffed, and the quadruple stuffed, and the triple X stuffed, and they got the, all these different flavors, too, the mega stuffed, the uh, ultra mega stuffed Oreos, right? Then you have the ones that are the different flavors, etc. I just like the basic one. That's my that is my favorite uh, Oreo cookie. Now, what I do with them is uh, I'm sure any Oreo cookie fanatics would find this uh, sacrilegious. Uh, well, yeah, you know, I'll snap it in half. It usually breaks very easily, and then you're, you're gonna you're gonna you're not going to believe this one, right? So what I do is I'll take half of it, just put it right in. Water. <laughs> not milk. Not tea, not whiskey, just water. That's what, that's what I wash it down with, water. Yep. It's sacrilegious, but it is what it is. That's just, that's just how I, how I eat them. And that uh, is what it is. <laughs> Crazy. I know, I'm a mad lad. I knew, I knew, I knew that this was, this is the pinnacle. I mean, this is the, uh, this is the zenith right here of the live stream. I mean, what you're seeing right now, this is as good as it gets. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, this is, this is it right now. This, you, you've never seen anything like it. I know, this is, this is where it's at. I got, I gotta say, it's, it's insane, I know. I know, it's like, if you ever tried to wonder what the fourth dimension looks like, like you've seen a 4D cube, but you're trying to think about a four-dimensional perspective on things, this is it right here. Water with Oreos. That, that right there is the secret to the universe. You were wondering, you know, all of that. This is it. Water with Oreos. That's the way it's done. I, I, I don't care. I know most people... I mean, it's, you know, it's a saying for a reason. Oreos, they're uh, milk's favorite cookie. You know, every, everyone... Everyone... Uh, everyone likes dipping them with the milk. That's fine. I respect that. 
if you would rather just eat the Oreo cookies dry, you know, that's fine by me too. If for some reason, uh, you know, you just want to, I don't know, eat the Oreo cookie whole and then chase it down with some wine, you know, do that too. Uh, if you want to just chase it down with some Starbucks, um, vanilla latte, iced of course, uh, go for it. You know, eat, eat it how you want to eat it. The Barn checking in says, hello from Central Illinois. Hello to you, sir. All right. Oh, we got a few more super chats coming in. Uh, let's see. Let's see what we got. Let's see. Uh, a lot of people were saying, am I wearing pants? I am indeed. As a matter of fact, as undeniable proof that I am wearing pants, you could even go back to the uh, to the live stream, go back, whatever, 20, 30 minutes, and you will find that I even, not just did I stand up and show the pants that I was wearing, I'm actually wearing socks, and get this, I'm wearing shoes too. So I'm, I mean, I'm going all out. I got, you know, I'm not just sitting here in, in boxer shorts or anything. Uh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm going with pants. That's, that's, that's how it's done. How it always has been done. Uh, anyway, like I was saying, uh, let's go to a few of the super chats that I missed because we got, we got caught up in the, uh, Oreo frenzy. Uh, so let's see what we uh, what we have. Um, let's see. Well, David, that's an odd. Uh, that's an odd message. I don't know what that means. I'm just not gonna not gonna go there. Uh, Brush note RV checking in. Uh, do you think AI should or could have emotions. Uh, that is in regards, of course, to artificial intelligence. Um, I think there will come a point where it will. Artificial intelligence, that's one of those subjects. I lectured on it, um, well, a, a while ago. I mean, it seems like it was a while ago. I don't know, it was probably months back. But I remember in my, my podcast, Someone raised the topic of artificial intelligence, and, uh, you know, I was, uh, I was, I was talking about it, and, uh, part of me thinks that technology, the advancement thereof, anyway, it's gonna be, like, one of two things, okay? It's either gonna be, it's either gonna happen, anyway, faster than we anticipated, or slower than we anticipated. And I think it's going to be one of those two things. I think at some point, now it may end up being uh, 50 years from now. Might be, you know, after I'm long dead. Could be 20 years from now. I mean, who's to say? I think uh, artificial intelligence, you know, will definitely come about. And I think it'll definitely end up playing a role in things. The one thing, how big of a role will it end up playing, right? And it'll be something interesting to, uh, to see. I think in due time, no matter what course happens, I think that there will be artificial intelligence that will be programmed uh, with emotions. You know, of course, I imagine... And then, then, now then, that all comes down to, all right, are the emotions genuine, or are they just pre-programmed? Will the artificial intelligence get to that point, yes, in regards to technological singularity, where it will eventually kind of break out of that, gain its own sentience, and then from there, who knows what'll happen, right? Uh, or will it end up being where it's kind of just like it... It is programmed with emotions, but in truth, it's really just like a complicated algorithm. It is not its own independent, even creature, you can go as far as to say. That'll be interesting to see um, what ends up happening, what path it ends up going down to. Part of me thinks almost, in, uh, in regards to artificial intelligence, when it's perfected, it may end up coming about in regards to, 
um, almost in a in a war type scenario. It always seems like a lot of those advancements are made, sadly, when there's large scale conflict. But I mean, who, who's to say? There are so many options, so many so many possible paths that can go down. Uh, what happens happens. That's the only thing you can uh, can say. Anyway, what uh, what's going on in the chat? I see a lot of people. Yeah. All right. Anyway, what other? Uh... All right. Uh, Raina checking in says, uh, "Hey, can you say happy B day, Eric? You're 19 now, bud. All right. Happy birthday to you. Happy 19th." Um, Chris, Chris Bradford, my dude, why you built like Randall off Monsters, Inc.? Where, where do you think I came from? There's, there's the answer to your question. Uh, Catnip wanted to know, am I a whiskey drinker? No, I'm not. I'm not. It's, uh, no, not, not the strong stuff. Um, <laughs> Laura uh, says, uh, my eyes. <laughs> yes, well, most of us have have two of them. Uh, there was a time I had a third one, and it went away. Um, Jenna Codex uh, says, uh, I drink plain hot water with cookies, so I get you. Yeah, yeah you get it. Uh, RJ says, uh, what are your thoughts on lab-grown meat? The, uh, I mean... I think in most of us, the uh, the concept of, of lab-grown meat, I think at first, it definitely kind of, you know, almost grosses you out, because you just think of, like, all right, here's what I think of, at least, when, um, when I think of lab-grown meat, right? I think of this, uh, like, this weird slop in a, uh, in a Petri dish. You know that they're just kind of probing around or whatever, and uh, and that's that. But it might end up getting to a point where it it would get indistinguishable from regular meat. You could literally, I mean, I'm not saying this might happen one day, where if you put two sandwiches next to each other, right, one is just like a sandwich with regular store bought meat, and then the other is with lab grown meat. You put the two next to each other, it might get to a point there, you cannot even uh, differentiate, you know, the uh, the two. You know, so, I mean, I don't know enough about it to, I, w I would say, give a, a qualified response. Um, so that's, uh, that's where, it, that's where it stands. Uh, all right, do we have, um... Tom, checking in, uh, have you had your IQ tested? Also, you remind me of my son, Kean. Uh, he's on the spectrum and a genius. No, I've never had my IQ tested. Uh, you know, IQ tests, I kind of look at them anyways. The same, the same way as the, uh, what is that? The 16 personalities test, you know, all of that. Um, where, you know, of course... For instance, same thing, like one's personality, uh, one's intelligence, you know, what what you can, you can't do, what type of person you are. All of that is, is most certainly important. But I think some people just take the results, uh, they'll either manipulate the results till they get what they want, or they'll go ahead and uh, they'll just take the results and it seems like people will just either flaunt them or berate others based on the results that are obtained. Uh, Kyle Larson fan, 42 NASCAR, says, OMG, he's live. Hello. Hello to you as well. And, uh, yeah, the, uh, I've, I've been live for a while. Myers-Briggs test, that's what it's called. And, uh, oh, Chris says, says, have you ever been outside? No. No, I don't know what that means, but no, I've never, never been to a place called outside. Um, if you could tell me where that's located, please fill me in and, then maybe I could tell you uh, what's what's going on with the, the outside. Anyway, I figure since I've been doing this long enough, I'm probably not going to be able to pick anything up, but just for personal curiosity, I'm just going to turn the radio on, spin the dial a little bit, and see if 
anything worth listening to is on the air. I'm going to go with the good old shortwave, and uh, we'll see. I highly doubt it, though. Because, you know, the thing with shortwave radio is that it is so prone to interference. You know, it's uh, like these lights that I have on to give you the, the optimal uh, viewing conditions will probably interfere with the radio and its performance and all of that. But I'm going to scan around. We'll see if we, we pick anything good up. Religious station. Don't want to play this one too long. 5085, that's uh, WTWW. They're a uh, shortwave station. They play a lot of uh, oldies music, you know, classic rock. I was listening to them last night. They're playing some good Fleetwood Mac, which is uh, pretty solid, pretty good taste, I gotta I got say. Let's see. Lots of static, just a religious station. Another religious station. You can tell already what the what's usually broadcast on shortwave. Kind of weak signal, 6020 kilohertz, China Radio International. Oh, 6105, that's a good one. NHK Radio Japan. They still broadcast to North America, Japanese. Yeah, that's always, they, they come in loud and clear. Good signal there. We'll see what else. You know, reception always isn't the best inside, except for the real big, you know, powerhouse stations, as I call them, with the big transmitters. Nothing really on the 41 meter band. 9420 kilohertz, uh, Voice of Greece coming in. Good. Good signal there. Uh, and let's just finish it up, see if there's anything else that's that we can pick up anyway. Yeah, like many people have said, shortwave, it ain't what it used to be, but there's still stuff out there that we can pick up. Three, two, one, five kilohertz. I know that's WWCR out of Nashville. Um, just trying to... Weak signal, I'm trying to figure out who this is. Oh, I know what show this is, yeah. Three, two, one, five, yeah. That, that's what's on shortwave, pretty much. That that show uh, is, uh, you know, an alternative uh, medicine uh, pro, you know, show. Uh, really, it's just this guy trying to sell his own products that are just, um, I think it's just calcium pills that, you know, he claims will cure cancer and all this, and it's just a snake oil salesman. You get a lot of that on the shortwave, sadly. You know, lots of, uh, you know, people just trying to take advantage of other people, pretty much. But, uh, like I said, I mean, shortwave radio, it's one of those things. Granted, if I turned these lights off and all of that and had the antenna closer to the window, you'd be able to hear more stuff. There would definitely be more, uh, more on the air. Uh, but in the end, like I said before, the, uh, you know, shortwave radio, it's certainly on the decline. It's not like what it was even, um, you know, even in 2011, there was so much more on the airwaves. Uh, there's still there's still stuff to listen to today, but the, uh, you know, definitely less. Definitely less than what there was. Someone is wondering if that guy was uh, <laughs> Alex Jones. No, no, that wasn't. That wasn't him, though. You could you could find him on the shortwave, too, if you really wanted to. Um, someone was saying, you ever listen to the buzzer on uh, 4625? Yeah? Oh, yeah. And that's actually what got me into shortwave, believe it or not. It was the buzzer, you know, UVB76, right? Uh, that's actually what got me into uh, to shortwave. Uh, you know, I was, I was just... I was, I was thinking to myself the other day, yeah, it was, it was the buzzer. You know, I was just trying to think to myself... Like, what is, uh, 
what you know what what is it you know what's what's going on really uh, the buzzer is a uh, channel marker used by the russian military and uh i mean it's it's there to keep the frequency occupied so that if someone is scanning around they know that this frequency is in use and it's used by the russian military uh, really to send out messages to uh, various units and there are many other stations out there that have the same exact purpose as a channel marker most of them simply have a little morse code identification uh, but of course the buzzer 4625 kilohertz uh, has that distinctive buzzing tone which makes it so unique so uh, that's where that stands um, and let's see what else uh, people were saying but yeah I remember at first and I think this is one thing that confuses a lot of us when it comes down to shortwave radio you know see I, I can't tune into the buzzer I'll try but I'm located too far away and you know if I was in Europe I might be able to to hear it but I'll guarantee right now if I go to 4625 kilohertz and then go to upper sideband nothing see only static reason being is because the buzzer you know where it's transmitted where they're aiming the signal isn't toward the US it's it's beamed domestically for Russia it's for the, the Russian military so it's not going to really make it all the way over here into the US unless conditions are good uh, but over in in Europe you know like on the uh, whatever the the one web SDR radio in the Netherlands um, you could hear it loud and clear most of the time but on your own radio I think people just expect that it'll come blasting in even though it, it might not be so uh, anyway that's where that stands but like I was saying then I'm gonna quit talking about the shortwave for a little bit the one thing that always confused me and I imagine a lot of people um, you know think think the same thing we're so used to streaming radio right like even if you listen to FM or AM or satellite right you turn on you go to the station that you want to listen to and it is broadcasting on the same frequency 24 7 right you listen to your uh, whatever your local uh, top 40 station or you know maybe you're more of a, an adult contemporary person or maybe uh, you know alternative rock or whatever country music you tune to the FM frequency it's going to be there broadcasting 24 7. the confusing thing about shortwave is that it doesn't work that way with only a few exceptions number stations for instance are not 24 7. it's not like if you found out the frequency for a number station you just type it into your radio and you'll hear it 24 7. not at all uh, you might hear it for five minutes in the span of one single week and even international broadcasters uh, like my own show right I broadcast this evening right before I started live streaming I had my radio show uh, transmitted on 58 50 kilohertz shortwave out of uh, WRMI uh, you know, in Okeechobee Florida it was broadcast for that one hour and that's it so I mean you know you tune in on your radio to 5850 for that one hour span you'll hear my show but then if you like right now if you try to listen to 58 50 kilohertz you might not even hear anything um shortwave radio is just the broadcasts are all very temporary usually last for a few hours and they sign off and you could listen a few hours the next day or whatever but that's where it stands like i'm, I'm just curious right now i'm just uh I'm just checking, you know, the broadcast on 5850. I'm just checking, seeing if I got any reception reports for it. Some people, you know, they still listen to, to shortwave. Uh, Joe over in uh, uh, New Market, uh, Virginia, listening in on his Texan PL660. That's the same radio I had there. Um, let's see what else we got uh someone in utah listened in that's good yeah no i mean the broadcast is doing good 
So, uh, yeah, I mean, people still, people still listen, listen, you know, and that's that. Anyway, people don't care about shortwave, so, uh, I'm just gonna go and, uh, see what else we got. Like I said, the main point about this, uh, show is the fact that, uh, you know, it's Q&A. Miscellaneous talk, question and answer. So that was the miscellaneous talk. Like I was saying, if there's any Q&A that you have, if there's any question, answer, anything you'd like to ask, uh, just go ahead, go for it, um, ask away. Best way to do it, of course, is via the Super Chat, because it's just a, uh, you know, it's a good way to, uh, I don't know, if you ask me, it's just a good way to get your message outlined, get it out there, and help this channel out at the same time. So, uh, that's where that stands. And, uh, with that, let's just go back to, uh, some question, answer, and, uh, let me just take a sip of coffee first, ener energize myself. So anyway, yeah, if you have any questions, go for it. And, uh, let's see, most, let's see what we got in the, uh, in the chat. <laughs> Review bras lost, son. <laughs> Checking in. Um, let's see what else we got. Chris Ray, uh, says, uh, how often do you cook? Uh, when it comes down to cooking, that was another thing that I actually just talked about in regards to, uh, my podcast, you know, on, on, I guess it was one show back. The, uh, yeah, in regards to cooking, I think cooking is, like I said on the podcast, I think it really can be an art in, in some way where, you know, it's, it takes skill. It's something that you can, you can learn. It's something that you can pick up. I am no master chef. I'll say that right now, but cooking is definitely a skill. And I think it does take skills to be able to, to cook and, uh, prepare a, a good meal, you know? And even then, like, one thing that I like watching, and I think a lot of people like watching, is uh, Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares. You know, a lot of people like watching that. And, uh, I mean, even then, like, you can see, right, on, on Kitchen Nightmares, lots of people who have full-blown restaurants, it doesn't work out the best, you know? So, uh, I mean, that's, uh, that, that's where it stands. Anyway, let me just, uh, check one last thing on the phone here. All right, well, we're still good to go. I still got some energy, so we'll just, we'll, we'll go for it. Um, let's see what else we have. Well, we'll check the, uh, the super chat. We'll see if anything came in. And, uh, then from there... Looks like the page is glitching out on me, so I'm going to refresh it and see if anything came in. Uh, otherwise, let's see. Um, Jay uh, says, who's your favorite professional wrestler? I'm not a big fan of professional wrestling, so, uh, I mean, I, I myself, I can't really, uh, I, I can't really say. I'm not, I don't know, I watched, I think I watched a professional wrestling match, like on, on online or on YouTube or something, um once but it wasn't it just wasn't very captivating you know that's that's the one thing uh anyway let's see uh what else we have uh jonathan hey hey jonathan he's checking in um who else said hi there was someone else that said hi but i didn't oh mohawk bear says hello as well hello to you uh silent says uh favorite shirt and tie combo uh, I mean, I always like just going with a standard white, uh, dress shirt, uh, you know, depending on the weather. So sometimes I go with the short sleeve dress shirts, uh, sometimes long sleeve ones, you know, it all depends really on, on how I'm feeling, what's going on. So, uh, you know, I'll just go, go usually with a white dress shirt, but I like the blue shirts too, gray, um, black, um, I used to have a green shirt, a yellow shirt, oh, a tan one, sometimes striped shirts. As for the tie, let's see. There's one tie that I have that's definitely my favorite, no doubt. It's just, it's a black necktie with, um, 
It's like black with blue stripes. It's just a really, uh, it's just my favorite tie. Uh, David Miller checking in says the illusion loves you. <laughs> You know, he, he's awesome. I always, I always like his channel. Yeah. It's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting channel. Anyway, let's see if this page finally refreshed, because I'm trying to, I'm trying to see what Super Chats came in, but for some reason they weren't showing up, which is uh, a bit of a pain if you ask me. So I'm just trying to... Okay, here, here they are. All right, what did, what did I miss? Let's see. Um, all right, here's where we left off. Uh, Royal Nice 2113 uh, writes in, would you shout out uh, Nick E? Um, all right. And uh, give thoughts on anime. Uh, yeah, when it comes down to anime, I know a lot of people uh, like it. I know a lot of people are, are fans of it. I myself am not a... Uh, you know, an anime fan, it just doesn't appeal to me. That That's all that there is to it. Not that I have some sort of um, absolute disdain for it or anything like that, but, uh, you know, it, it just, I don't know, it just doesn't appeal to me. But, you know, not that I have anything against it. It's just not my, uh, not my thing. Uh, otherwise, uh, let's see who else is checking in. Um... Kyle writes in, uh, he says, what is the best way to stay confident in a humiliating situation? Well, I mean, it all depends on what, what one's definition of a humiliating situation is. For instance, you could even look at this own live stream, right? And you can, um, you can look at me sitting here right now and you can consider this a humiliating situation. Um, and that's, you know, that's what... It all depends on your definition in regards to staying confident in it. Uh, one thing to remember, of course, is that nine times out of ten, most people are going to forget about it, um, and it's usually inconsequential. Otherwise, you know, just keep your eyes keep your eyes ahead. Uh, yes, the past is the past. It is it is what it is, but the future still is is unwritten. You know, you can still you can still go forward. There's still something that you can. You know, it's a, it's an unwritten book, you can say. So uh, that's where that comes in. Uh, Tom Tom nine fifteen Melendez says, uh, "Are you afraid of ghosts?" No, no, I'm not. I'm not afraid of ghosts. You know, I've I've, I've never even had a paranormal encounter, believe it or not. Uh, you know, I've st I've stayed actually at a lot of these um, haunted hotels and all that. You know, in the haunted uh, hotel rooms, all that. Never had a paranormal experience, so as a result, it doesn't uh, it doesn't bother me at all. If you know, if if something ever happens, I mean, I'll change my mind. But I've never had any experiences with uh, with ghosts at all. Uh, someone else, let me see if I could try and um, uh, oh, thirst quencher says, uh, could you do a hair tutorial video? Serious question. Uh, in regards, like someone said. The, uh, in regards to, like, the skin care, I did a video called My Hair Care Routine as well. Um, so, I got, I got it all covered for you. If you really want to look like me for some reason, then, um, yeah, I mean, you, you got the skin care routine down, you got the hair care routine down. Um, that, that's all that there is. So, yeah, we got the video there for you. Uh, let's see what else some, some someone was saying. Um, are you a Natasha Bedingfield fan? I know, I know when I mentioned Unwritten, yeah, that's a song of hers. Uh, it, it doesn't bother me. I'm not the world's biggest fan, but of course I'm aware of that song. Um, Space, no, that's, uh, 33 Hours. Uh, I was mentioning Harold and Maude. That's a great, that's a great movie. The whole thing is, uh, is, is great. The whole, the whole film is wonderful. Anyway, on to a few other, um, let's see, a spectator checking in. Uh, have you ever heard of the band Tool? Very lyrically introspective music. I think you'd really like it. Uh, I've, I've heard of the band, never really listened to them, though, but thank you for the suggestion. Um, Wario9989, are you willing to eat 10 mini 
chicken quesadillas while reviewing each one from, from Taco Bell. While reviewing each one, they're quite delicious. I believe in you. It's only $10. Well, I, that's not something that I'm going to commit myself to. Uh, I'm just I'm telling you that right now. I'm not going to commit myself to that because I, I, I just have a feeling. Like, this kind of reminds me of, you know, it's like a White Castle, you know? None of that in Florida, but, you know, in New York, White Castle with the little sliders, um, sometimes my eyes would get bigger than my stomach, and I would get ten White Castle sliders, and I'd think to myself, oh, you know, they're they're so, uh, they're so small, and I could just gobble them right up, and then by the time I've eaten four of them, I'm already full, and there, there you go, you know, messed up. Uh, someone was asking... Uh, oh, well, first, F12 video says uh, you watch NASCAR. I do watch NASCAR on occasion. I've always been a uh, Jimmy Johnson fan. Uh, someone else was saying... Let me see. Someone was, someone was asking about The Walking Dead. I don't know who it was. I'm sorry I didn't get your name. Uh, yeah, The Walking Dead. One thing that amazes me is the fact that that series is still going. I don't watch it anymore. I haven't in, uh, I mean, for years. And I mean, I've, I've, I've heard people say that The Walking Dead has kind of gotten a little better uh, as, of, as of recent. But the, uh, I mean, the one thing, the reason why I stopped watching The Walking Dead anyway, was because it just, it ended up focusing more on, like, I don't know, it started becoming more of just a drama show and it seemed like they were just going through the same exact plot line over and over and over. And it just, it wasn't interesting. Um, that just wasn't of, uh, that, that wasn't the reason why I wanted to watch the show. Fear the Walking Dead, I had a lot of, of hope for. I mean, that was the show that I wanted. That was the show that I really wanted to see. You know, the beginning of the outbreak, right? How does the government, um control all of it how do they how do they manage it how do they deal with it right and they blew that one too so that was very disappointing i was just disappointed where the first season of fear the walking dead was uh pretty solid though i didn't like that they did the time jump it was is what it is and then the second season it just became like the walking dead 2.0 in mexico and it, you know i just wasn't a fan of that one thing that always got me about The Walking Dead, though, and it's just, it's it's Hollywood logic, you know? That's all that there is, uh, there is to it. It's one of those things, like, it doesn't even, it's one of those things that's so silly. It's not even, I don't know, it's not even worth spending any time to. But I was just thinking to myself, like, in, in Fear the Walking Dead, I guess they kind of allude to this in, in The Walking Dead, too, um, where they say, uh, you know, the, the government as a last resort was trying to do uh, Operation Cobalt and whatnot, and they were trying to uh, napalm all the big cities to as a last means of containment. You know, why didn't why didn't they only just deploy the nuclear arsenal at that point, save the, the resources, you know, and uh, and just, just do that instead of, I don't know, just didn't, didn't make any sense to me, but yeah, that's... I'm wasting far much time, far much more time on an insignificant thing than I should be. Uh, but yeah, you can just get caught up in that stuff. Anyway, um, Tom is checking and he says, My excitement is immeasurable and my day is amazing whenever I watch your videos. Uh, Laura said, uh, do you enjoy Little Shop of Horrors? I haven't seen that in a, I, in a, in a while. I couldn't, I couldn't give a good answer there. Um... Hello from Australia, review bra. Uh, shout out to Karn. Uh, let's see. Uh, good evening, John. I have a fun question for you. If you could live anywhere in the country, where would it be and why? Uh, to me, it seems you seem like a Palm Springs kind of guy uh, with all its mid-century styling. Well, thank you for your question. Uh, you know, California at some place would be, would be nice to... Uh, at least visit at some point. The only time I was ever in, uh, in California was, uh, I mean, it was just for the, 
Natash.0 thing, and that was so, you know, such a short span of, of time that it was just, uh, you know, in and out and that was it. But I did get to go to in and out Burger, but uh, at some point I would want to... California is, uh, yeah. Is, uh, is nice. Let me just see what, what this guy's talking about. Tell me to answer someone, but I don't see who, who it is. Oh, well. If I see it, I'll, you know. Anyway, uh, what else do we have? Um, who would you like to interview on your show? That's a good question. I don't really have anyone, uh, on my, you know, to interview. I mean, you never know. Again, at some point in time, when it comes down to, uh, doing, you know, interviews, if that is ever of, of, uh, of note, or if that's something that I want to do, uh, we'll just take it, you know, take it from there. But, you know, that's where that, uh, it comes from uh, Albert Felix. What kind of steroids do you take? None, none. What you could see right here, this is all this is all natural. This is all just from hitting the gym every single day. Spend at least five to eight hours working out every single day. Don't forget leg day too. That's very important. Um, let's see what else we got. Um, Danjo 2000, how do you feel about fast food places limiting portion size? Say hi to Nate Johnson in uh, Pagosa Springs. You're a class act. Well, it all depends. Is uh, the portion size, or should I say the limitation thereof, is this being done in regards to a health conscious standpoint? Or is it being done um, as a means of just trying to cheat you, you know? Like where they'll say, oh yeah, you'll get this burger that uh, will be like a, whatever. They'll try to advertise it. Let's just say, for instance, it's a quarter pound of uh, beef. And then in the end, you get it, and it looks like this tiny thing, and they're still overcharging you. So is it in regards to um, health-wise? or in regards to just trying to screw you over and make more money for them. Uh, anyway, um, who is that that keeps saying? From uh, Zealand, Michigan, uh, hello to you. And uh, hello to everyone in New Zealand as well. Uh, all right, let's see what other super chats we have. Um, let's see what else we got. Um, Manta checking in again. Have you ever had any teeth pulled from your mouth like molars? What was the most major injury you suffered? Uh, I've never had any teeth that have actually been pulled. Um, you know, so no, no, no actual dental extractions. So it's like, you know, it's actually been where they're just you know, ripping the tooth out. Of course, I've had uh, cavities filled, you know, cavities Cavities galore, uh, because, you know, back in the day, of course, now I, I've been trying to improve my dental hygiene, you know, you brush the teeth, floss them, do the mouthwash, all of that, um, but there was a time when they really, it was just a bad dentist, and sadly, I think that happens, um, so many times, where you just get, you know, like, just, just dentists that, I don't know, they just don't do a good job. So many people say the same thing, too. I don't know what it is in the dental industry, why this happens. But there was, um, you know, there was there was this one dentist that I, I went to in New Jersey. And I had to get a cavity filled on one of my uh, molars, you know, in the back of the mouth. That's all that there was to it. So they grind and grind and grind and grind. And then they put a temporary filling in for no discernible reason whatsoever. No, no reason at all. And I was thinking to myself first, like, well, you know, what the, why, why exactly did they need to do that? And then they go, a few weeks later, remove the temporary filling. Then they put in a uh, amalgam filling. 
And then by the time it's done, I, I'm like, I'm missing part of my tooth. I was thinking to myself, why? It was a cavity. You don't need to remove a third of the tooth for a cavity. It was very obvious, just a, in my opinion anyway, a, a completely botched, um, you know, trying to just remove the, remove the, the cavity. Yeah, exactly. It was an insurance scam, and uh, they, they screwed it up at the same time. That was no fun. And then, since you brought it up, I guess we're just, we're just going all out tonight. Someone um, asked in, uh, in regards to uh, the worst injury I s sustained. I mean, you know, I, well, I mean, I broke, I broke my big toe once. Uh, you know, that, that happened. Um, and then there was the time when I accidentally messed up my eye. It was a, that was a fun one where, uh, that one, I don't, I don't even want to talk about. It still creeps me out to this day, but let's just say I accidentally mo moved my eye to a place where it shouldn't have been. Uh, you know, the eyeball, it came, it, I guess it drifted up back, but, you know, that was, that was scary. That was, uh, that was really creepy. Something I'm... You know, I never want to experience again if I can afford to uh, to do so. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm done talking about injuries. That's that's no fun. Uh, Marvin Marvin Potter checking in. Um, let's see. This guy says, "Do you ever wonder anything about us?" Well, what do you mean? I mean, I, I wonder a lot of things about the uh, about the the world. You know, about the 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 universe. Um, you know, so by us, uh, what do you mean in, in that regard? What do I wonder? So, uh, that's where, uh, that's where that stands. <laughs> wonder, uh, lots of, uh, lots of things. Uh, let's see what else. Ian, Ian Marshall checking in three times. Um, he said, uh, could you shout out DJ Nick Cirano? And, um, oh, hello. Hello to the DJ, and uh, Aravik says, "Are you a fan of Lord of the Rings, Tolkien?" Yeah, Lord of the Rings is great. Uh, the movies were, uh, were 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 incredible. You know the the Peter Jackson ones, of course. So uh, you know, yeah, it, it's just been uh, it's been great. All right, what else do we have? Um, oh, Ian, Ian checking in again said, uh, can you give a happy birthday shout-out to my friend, uh, Greg, aka Big Tuna, in Boston. So, uh, big shout-out to, uh, to Greg. Greg over there in Boston. All right. Well, how long have we been streaming for tonight? I find myself at a, uh, at a crossroads. I do. I find myself at a crossroads right now thinking to myself, I still have some energy. I mean, I don't know. How long has the stream been going? What did I start it at? Started it at, I guess, 9, right? 9-something? Nine 9.05, I think I think it was. It's 11.02 right now. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking to myself right now. Should I end the stream, or should I take a quick, a quick break to freshen up, as they say in the most polite terms? And uh, keep it going a little, a little longer. I don't know. I'm gonna debate on that for a moment. Um, let's see. Yeah, two hours. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, about about two hours. Um, let's see. Jerry Lynn says uh, hello from Texas. Hello to you. Hello to everyone for uh, for tuning in. Uh, <laughs> Pepe Meme Frog checking in again. Um, let's see. If a five-hour energy, uh, Smith City's uh, WYR challenges said, yeah, five-hour energy is, um, that's one of those things that I was, it was one of those things that just, I mean, that's what I started out doing these, uh, I mean, like, do, doing these reviews, the first energy drink review that I ever, that I ever even did, five-hour energy, you know, it's, it's what I started as. So, uh, I, I don't know. Then I remember thinking, well, it kind of, I mean, I wasn't a fan of five-hour energy. My favorite energy drinks are always Monster. 
Um, probably Monster has always been my, my favorite one. And, uh, yeah, Five Hour Energy. Then I remember reading like it had health issues with it or something that could kill you. I was thinking to myself, wow. I mean, what a, uh, what a thing. Yeah, I tell you, though. Nowadays, I mean, I go on the Starbucks, you know, kick. Though, one other, um, not really that I, I, but like caffeine pills, I think it's the, um, what do they call it, Vibrin, I, I think it is. A lot of people warn against caffeine pills, and I could understand why. Because in, uh, you know, yeah, it has to be done in moderation, but sometimes if you need a quick boost, really, that's all that you, know, you can do. All right, I'm checking the time right now. It is 11.05 p.m. I think I'm going to take a quick break, and uh, then I'll be back in a minute. So, uh, as uh, there was one, there was one live stream that I was, I was, um, that I saw the other day where this guy had this this glass of milk or, or something, and he was saying like, can you watch the glass of milk while I'm gone? So I guess, you know, while I'm gone for what'll probably be like a minute. Can, can, can you watch, can you watch the quilt in, in the background and just, just make sure that it's, it's doing okay? Will you, you guys be able to do that for me? All right, awesome. Thank you so much. And I'll be back in a minute. And uh, then after that, I think we'll just go through the last few uh, topics and uh, then we'll wrap up the, uh, the stream for the evening. So I uh, hope you're enjoying the show so far. And uh, yeah, with that said, we've been going strong and... Uh, yeah, we're going to, uh, I think we're going to keep it going for a little bit. Not like this is going to be a, a 10-hour stream or anything, but, uh, yeah, I'm, oh, yeah, I'm leaving the camera on. You guys just watch the quilt, make sure it, it, it doesn't go anywhere, that it, that it stays safe, and, uh, yeah, all right, I'll be back in a few.
All right. Was it was it good? Was it was it behaving itself? All right. The quilt is moving. I guess it isn't anymore. All right, anyway. I hope it was behaving. And uh, we are back. We are back indeed after uh, after the big the big break. And uh, yeah, there we go. I'm sure I'm sure you noticed. I'm I'm sure you noticed that I I combed my hair. Insane. Insane, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Here we are. Uh, back again. Back again with the glorious, the big show, and uh, yeah. So like I said, uh, when it comes down to uh, to this this stream, all that's on it. Uh, yeah, the only thing that really, I mean, like I said, the uh, the title really says it all. Review raw Saturday Night Live stream Q and A miscellaneous talk. Uh, that's the uh, you know that that's the gist of it. And, uh, yeah, really, like we've been doing for the last, you know, however many minutes, uh, yeah, this is just a, uh, a live stream where, really, I'm just here to share my thoughts on whatever, uh, answer some questions, you know, and, uh, perhaps give some answers, just, you know, shoot the breeze for a bit, and, uh, just have a miscellaneous live stream where, uh, I'll just take a few of your questions, and if I can answer them, uh, perhaps I will. The, uh, the the one thing, of course, that always does work out best is uh, the super chat, granted. Uh, because, of course, as I've said for many, many times, is, uh, you know, yeah, it's a good way to, uh, you know, to help support everything, support the channel, support the podcast, of course, the shortwave broadcast. And it's also a good way to, uh, you know, really get your statement, your question, your shout out, whatever it is. Uh, outlined and you know stand out from the rest of the um, the channel. Uh, the first uh, one that I want to get back to just comes from Nate420. Uh, this is a topic that actually I don't think I've really touched upon recently. Was uh, I think it was in regards to uh, Tosh.0. Oh. He was saying how many subscribers did you gain from Tosh.0? Oh? And I mean, that's an interesting question. Now, the whole Tosh.0 oh, um, fiasco, you could, I mean, you could call it whatever you want. I, I just like to kind of, you know, sarcastically call it the Tosh.0 oh, fiasco. It was a very fun opportunity. You know, it was like a, uh, I mean, it was an experience. The whole Tosh.0 oh thing, it started back in uh, 2013, believe it or not, where they were contacting me. A lot of the time when it comes down to these shows, like, uh, you know, Tosh.0 or whatever, they will be the ones to contact you. And they were messaging me and messaging me, and they were saying, you know, you want to be on Tosh.0, etc. And I was actually very uh, hesitant at first. And I, I rejected the uh, idea a few times. I said, you know, no, it, you know, I'm not, I'm not feeling it. Well... Go flash forward two years later to 2016, and I finally decided, okay, gonna do it. The Tosh.0, it was a lot of fun. One thing, and I've said this before, I'll say it um, again, is uh, in regards to, to Tosh.0, right? Daniel Tosh, I mean, he's awesome. He's a, I mean, he is a great guy, uh, really, really friendly person. The, the, the person that he is on the show is, it's a persona, you know? That's the way you have to think about it. It's a persona, it's a, uh, it's a character, where, uh, yeah, that's where, that's where it stands, and you have to understand that. But, I mean, in reality, he's a great guy, very friendly. The whole, the whole process took about 45 minutes. This is the one thing that bothered me about it, okay? And it's just my criticism, and that's it. Um, when it comes down to Tosh.0, oh, the 
the one thing that I wanted them to mention was my YouTube channel name. Because what they were really saying is, you know, look, this is going to um, really pay off for you in regards to uh, trying to, to, you know, promote your channel, get it out there, whatever. So they, uh, they said, okay, um, you know, we'll promote your channel, we'll promote your channel name, uh, all that. We'll say the report of the week and, you know, and I was told that they were going to promote the YouTube channel. It turned out, though, that the, the YouTube channel, I mean, they never, they never even said the channel name in the episode at all. And that was the one thing that upset me, uh, because I mentioned it, I was told that they would, and they didn't, and that's the one thing that, that bothers me. Now, the past is the past. Look, it is, it is what it is, and uh, that's all that there is. But as a result, despite millions of people having seen that episode of Tosh.0, the amount of people that actually uh, saw the, you know, the, the YouTube channel through Tosh.0 was marginal. As a matter of fact, I remember that's when I really first started getting recognized. Most people were just calling me Tosh.0 because they never even addressed me as whatever. They never mentioned the YouTube channel. They never mentioned anything. And uh, they were just saying, hey, Tosh.0. I remember the, uh, I remember checking the statistics after uh, Tosh.0 and I was... I mean, I, I kind of knew it going in before they even showed the episode. I thought to myself that it's probably not going to get any subscribers. And I think I got maybe 100 subscribers from, uh, from Tosh.0 the day that it aired, and that was it. Uh, it was a very, very small amount. Uh, but I think in due time, through repeats and through, you know, kind of at least having that, that image ingrained in people's mind uh, subliminally, right? the, uh, you know, the, um, at least people kind of remembered, and then, of course, now, if you just, you know, search whatever food review suit, you'll find the, uh, you'll find the YouTube channel from there. That was the one thing that just bothered me, but like I said, look, the past is the past, it is what it is, and uh, that's, you know, that's just, that's, that's all that there is to it. Otherwise, I mean, like I said, I had a lot of fun being on Tosh.0, and it was a, it was an experience. So, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a fun time. I gotta give him credit on that. That was my only frustration, but that was, that's all there was to it. All right, let's see, um, what, what else came in. Like I said, the, um, all right, here's the, um, here's the, here's the new, the new Super Chats, uh, coming in. Uh, hello to you, Ian, again. Um, Anthony B. said, uh, Have you tried the McDonald's bacon fries yet? And uh, what did your favorite fast food place be? Um, well, fast food-wise, nowadays, I mean, I'm a, I'm a big fan of, uh, you know, Chick-fil-A. They do a good job. Um, Culver's is pretty pretty good. Um, oh, what else is... What else is solid? You know, each place kind of has a few good items and a few bad items and all of that. And, uh, yeah, the one thing with, um, with McDonald's, I like the bacon Big Mac. I finally was able to get it with the bacon. I, I enjoy it. I just don't like how they inflate the price so much for just like a strip of bacon on it. But, no, the bacon Big Mac is solid. Gotta give them credit on that. Never tried the uh, bacon cheese fries, because I think, as I did say earlier in the stream, it was just because I'm not a big fan of, like, the cheese fries. You know, it's just too, too messy to eat, really. Steak and Shake used to be one of my favorite places. Nowadays, they've kind of been, I don't know, they've been going downhill. The price kind of went up, and, like, it's still, I mean, it's still good. But I just noticed that the price went up and that the portion size was kind of going down. And, you know. Uh, otherwise, um, let's see. They were saying, would you ever ex accept an offer from the Eric Andre show? Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, if I did, I know what I'm in for. Well, I mean, I kind of know what I'm in for anyway. But 
I would certainly be a, uh, it would certainly be an experience either way, because they'll certainly, uh, you know, they'll, they'll mess with you, and, uh, and that's where that stands. Um, let's see what else is, uh, is going on here. The, um, let's see. Oh, uh, RJ says, what are you sipping on, Review Pro? Well, two things. In the, uh, indestructible, um, drinking apparatus, uh, made of the radioactive elements, uh, is water. That's water in there. And then, to give me energy, is, uh, just some Starbucks, uh, iced, iced vanilla latte of coffee there. So anyway, let's see what, uh, what, uh, Super Chats came in. And, uh, yeah, let's, let's just go from there. So, uh, Nate420 said, uh, could you check your messages on Instagram? I don't really check the messages there. Um, if you, if you do want to get in contact with me, and, uh, I, I can't give any promises, uh, consider just sending an email here, the, the old school way, uh, to repweekinterview1 at gmail.com. That's for just any, you know, business inquiries and all that. Uh, but again, you know, I, I, can't, I can't promise a response. I can't promise anything would work out. Uh, just because, you know, there's so many variables, so many what-ifs, and just the volume that comes in each day. But uh, that's probably the best way if, if you know, you want to send something there. Uh, Manta checking in again. Are you, an, are you actually a redhead? Uh, believe it or not, it takes a lot of work, and I don't... Yeah, I don't really, um, I, I don't really talk about this much. When I was born, I mean, my hair looked very, very di different from how it does now. And it was through a lot of work, a lot of trial, error, you know, trying to get it done uh, just the, the, the right way. When I was born, my hair was curly, you know, it was, it was very curly, and it was blue. And I remember, it was this blue, curly hair. And I remember trying to think, you know, when I started finally getting old enough to decide, all right, I want to try and, you know, try and do something about it. I started using a lot of hair relaxers, trying to straighten it out. Then the hair dye, of course, I have to put that in pretty much every single day. And then, also, again, for the hold, I put the Brill Cream in there as well. So I never was a redhead, uh, but I did have just the real curly blue hair so uh that's that's what it originally was but no i was never a redhead um anyway sadie checking in says if you were a vegetarian what would you review oh well obviously i would go to uh lots of uh you know vegetarian i would, I would try lots of yes it was, it was blue indeed um yeah i would, I would go to I would even try out the, the vegan places. I would try lots of different salads, you know, all sorts of things. And there's many, many uh, options out there. Uh, even if, you know, some of those things I think I'll still try to pursue regardless of my, you know, my, my appetite or whatever it is that I eat or don't eat. Uh, just because, I mean, I think it'll be interesting. And, you know, I do want to try to eat healthier going forward. Um... Rongel checking in. He says, please review your cat's dinner. Um, th I think they already ate, so there's nothing left. Um, Will says, what would you recommend from Taco Bell? Uh, I would recommend that you go with the nacho fries, of course. Go with the nacho fries. Go for that. Always do that. Um, wash it down with some Baja Blast. What I always enjoy uh, going with is, uh, I mean, it's not too much when it comes down to the way of food, but I always like going with the uh, beefy nacho griller. I get it with no cheese. You don't have to. But I always like getting the beefy nacho grillers. Um, yeah. No uh, no cheese. Uh, some nacho fries. Always got to get the fire sauce, too. You can't... You can't... Uh, can't forget that one. And then the Baja Blast. Wash it down with that. Baja Blast. That undoubtedly is the best drink from Taco Bell. All oh, right, um, Tall Cheetah says, uh, my man, do you sleep? 
uh, on occasion, on occasion I do, you know, I, I sleep when I get tired. Um, let's see what else we have. Let's see what we got with the um, super chats here. Uh, when when you record your reviews, do you get nervous beforehand about doing it in one take? I do with my channel. Uh, when I first started out doing the reviews uh, back in um, back in 2011, 2012, there was that level of apprehension in regards to doing it. Of course, because it was something I'd never done before. Uh, yes, there always was that that level of um, you know. Not necessarily fear, I suppose just nervousness before I did the reviews. Nowadays, you know, you turn the camera on, you gotta make sure that the shot is right and all of that, and then you just go with it, and whatever happens, happens. Uh, if there's anything that I still get a little nervous about <clears throat> before I, I begin, it's actually doing these live streams, uh, uh, of, all, of all things. Because the live streams, not only, like, when you're doing a video in one take, you can do it, <clears throat> sorry, you can do it, and then even if you're not satisfied with the, um, whatever, the final product, right? Like, let's say you're doing a food review, and you're just not satisfied with it, even if you did it in one take, you're not a fan of it, all that, you can still, I mean, you could delete it, you could do it again. The live streams, on the other hand, it's going out live. So, I mean, whatever happens, happens, and it's kind of on the books. But, you know, that's where it stands. Um, who was it that asked? I mentioned this, again, another... <laughs> uh, Taylor said, do you believe in a thing called love? That was a that was a good song by The Darkness. Played that on the, the shortwave broadcast the other day. Um, someone was asking what product I use in my hair. I've said it before, but I'll say it once again. Uh, water and Brill Cream. So uh, that's where that stands. Um, let's see what else. Oh yeah, yeah, let's go over to the... Oh yeah, <laughs> Mystery Roach said, uh, would you ever review beer or liquor? I mean, that's not something that I'll ever... Um, I'll ever discount. I mean, I... Not saying that I won't, uh, but the problem is that it's a whole, I mean, it's a whole other world. It's a whole different world um, where the, uh, I mean, just like alcohol reviews, there are so many people out there that do the same, that, that exact same thing, and they are connoisseurs. They are experts in the field. All of a sudden, you get me in the game reviewing a beer or whatever, and uh, I think people would just be would be all over it, you know. They would just be saying, "Oh, you don't even know what the hell you're talking about," and this and that and the other thing. And uh, I mean, I could understand. I could understand that they wouldn't be wrong, you know. I don't. I, you know, I don't know uh, really left from from right when it comes down to to alcohol. So just be going into this other field that really I do not consider myself uh, qualified to be any sort of expert. Uh, in regards to, you know, to doing it. Anyway, I'm going to try and sit up better. I'm just looking at myself here, and I, I see it just seems like I'm a little trying to sit up straight anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> some of these comments or something else. I mean, let's just see what else we got coming in. Uh, like I said, just on one final note, of course, you got anything to say, you want to say it, you got any questions, you know, go ahead, shout them out, and, uh, yeah, you know, the, the one, the one way, of course, to do it best is, uh, through the, through the super chat, you know, that's a good way to do it, of course, helps, uh, helps support this channel, the podcast, and the broadcast, um, Base kick 10 uh, what are your thoughts on the situation in Venezuela? I got you covered on that in uh, in the recent podcasts that I did again which you could find youtube.com slash VORW podcast uh, I was talking about that I think uh, two shows ago I talked about the situation in Venezuela and the uh, conflict in uh, Jammu and Kashmir 
uh, between India and Pakistan. You know, I talked about that. I shared my thoughts on it. Uh, it's one thing, it, it's, you know, if you want to give it a listen anyway, the podcast that I do is for people who, who want to see more to the channel than just the, you know, the food reviews, than just what my thoughts are on a burger or whatever, uh, because I, I talk pretty much about, you know, whatever is going on, whatever is going through my mind, um, be that moral, philosophical topics, current events, so I try to avoid, you know, political stuff, because it's just so, so, so much vitriol with that. Sometimes, um, you know, whatever's going on in the world and all of that. So, <clears throat> something to check out, and, uh, yeah, like I said, I mean, I've, I've really been trying to make a, a huge, huge effort to try and make this podcast work, because it's, that's really what I like doing, and, uh, yeah, again, the, uh, I mean, in regards to the podcast, I just try to get it out on so many platforms. I try to get it out on my new YouTube channel, try to get it out on iTunes, on Spotify, on Stitcher, Pocket Cast, uh, TuneIn, Google Play, and even on Shortwave, too. I still maintain the Shortwave service, and, uh, I just keep trying to to do it, you know, as, as much as I can, because I have a lot of fun doing it. Um, like I said earlier, I've had to made, make a few cuts to the shortwave, uh, because just the airtime is too expensive, and, you know, the, uh, I mean, the, uh, I don't know, just the amount of, of correspondence received from the broadcast just wasn't enough to justify the costs. So, uh, that's, that's my thoughts anyway, but, like I said, yeah, the, I mean, the podcast, a lot of these topics that are brought up, I really do discuss in, in great detail, um, you know, on, on them. And I think it's, it's something to just check out. What I say, and I even just say this kind of, uh, you know, jokingly or whatever, is uh, even if you just want to listen to it for ASMR or to try to help you get to sleep, I don't take offense to that, you know? I don't take... Um, I don't take any offense to that whatsoever. Look, if it relaxes you, if it helps you get to sleep, just go for it, you know? There's nothing wrong with that. None of that stuff bothers me, but if you want to check it out, I just try to make it as, um, just as available as I possibly can. Someone said what uh, platform benefits me the most. Um, probably... I would say probably the new YouTube channel at this point, but a lot of the, uh, <clears throat> a lot of the, uh, platforms I think are more popular. Like, I know a ton of people listen on Spotify, and some people listen on iTunes, and more people than I thought listen on, on Stitcher, too. So, uh, I mean, every platform has its audience, but I've just been really trying to expand the show, uh, digitally. Um, do you like the B-52s? Yeah, they're a good group. They're, uh, they're, they're pretty solid. Um, oh, there were a bunch of songs from them that I, that I like. Um, of course, you know, Rock, Rock Lobster, you know, going, going to that one. Um, Love Shack is good. Uh, I think there is one, what it called Around the World or All Around the World or something like that. Uh, that was another solid song from them. And then, of course, the, the lead singer, her name escapes me at the the moment, uh, when she teamed up with R.E.M. and they did the song Shiny Happy People, that was another good one, so, uh, yeah, it was just, uh, I mean, just, yeah, a solid group, solid group, gotta give them credit, all right, who else is checking in on the super chat here, um, the SMG73, uh, salutations, bra, please review 7-Up Mixed, uh, yeah, yeah, no, that's not gonna happen, <laughs> There, there is no way, no way, you can write that one off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's not, that's not happening. Uh, the handicappable homunculus checking in again, donating because of the hair story. Um, oh, so I want you to say my, well, I did say it there. Um, let's see, the, uh, Yo man, uh, checking in, hello to you. Um, Ian says, uh, one more shout out for my boy Matt. 
Matt Mercer in New Zealand, over in, in New Zealand. Uh, David, David Berg writes in, um, Review Bra, would you consider reviewing food that isn't strictly fast food, but still within that vein, such as uh, Panera? Also, will you be at any conventions? I don't, I don't think I'll be at any conventions. I mean, you never know. But the, um, yeah, the uh, Panera, definitely, can definitely try, try to, you know, do more of that going forward. Uh, maybe even some of the, uh, you know, some of the, the sandwich shops like um, Jersey Mike's, right? Quiznos, those are always pretty good. Um, yeah, no, no, definitely, you know, like, I, like I, I know what you mean. When it comes down to, you know, the fast food, or at least the readily available food, right, there is that hierarchy and there are those differences. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely something I could look into uh, going forward. Anyway, uh, what else? Um... Rotten Goal is uh, checking in again. He said, please review your dog's dinner. Uh, already been fed as well, so there's nothing to review. Uh, Walter, uh, do you believe in ghosts? Love your stuff. Uh, like I said before, there was... Um, yeah, no, I, I don't... Yeah, oh, Jimmy John's too. Yep, uh, Firehouse Subs, all those places. Um, yeah, with ghosts, it's just... I, I've just... I've never had any paranormal experiences. That's the thing. Now... If anything, you know, paranormal that, you know, in, in my eyes anyway, happens to me, of, co of course, you know, I'll, you know, I'll be, I'll be all out. But I just haven't had any paranormal experiences. And like I said earlier, I've been to some of those haunted hotels and I've stayed in the haunted hotel rooms, you know, and nothing's ever happened. That reminded me of the one movie that I, I rewatched, um about a week or two ago, you know, 1408, I, I think it was, um, you know, based on the Stephen King story, that was always a, that was always a good, a good movie right there, um, but I've never, <laughs> never been in any rooms like that, uh, let's see what else we got, Will, uh, checking in, says, uh, thanks for the, um, beautiful recommendation, I almost live the same way you do. I greatly enjoy your channel, and I agree Baja Blast is, uh, is, is quite beautiful. Yeah, no. Baja Blast is great. Always, uh... Yeah, always, uh... Always been a fan of the Baja Blast. All right, what else do we have going? Let's see, let's see. I'm just going through this, um... Can you review the Hot Cheetos Asteroids? I've never heard of that. Is that is that new? Hot Cheetos Asteroids. I'm going to Google that real quick. Oh, they are back. Okay, well, I usually don't review a lot of the supermarket stuff, but, uh... Yeah. Oh, um... The guy's saying, how's the weather? So far, so good, you know. It's definitely, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's warm enough that I could be wearing the short sleeve shirt and tie set and uh, all of that. Andrew is saying, uh, hello from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Hello to you, sir. And, uh, yeah, I think they're back. I think those Cheetos, I think they're back. Yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I'm seeing anyway. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, sea Bear Memes is saying, uh, can you review the Mountain Dew Game Fuel series? Also, will we see any more movie reviews? I mean, maybe we'll see movie reviews. It's just, it's a matter of audience and what precisely uh, the audience wants to, to see. For instance, that's why I made the second channel for the podcast. Because uh, with this main channel, the Report of the Week, I think most people... Uh, just, you know, they prefer the food reviews, the food-related uh, content. So that's why I made a second YouTube channel, which is only going to have the, um, you know, the uh, the podcasts and all that. But then it'll go over there. Uh, of course, the audience that wants to see the podcast can find it, and uh, so on and so forth. All right, what else have we, uh, have we here? Um... 
Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Also, in, review, uh, in regards to what you were saying about the Mountain Dew, I remember one of the first things that I, uh, that I remember in, um, in regards to the, uh, Mountain Dew stuff. That was one of the first drinks that I actually reviewed. And I made a mistake when I was, uh, doing the review in 2011, where I, uh, I considered at the time the Mountain Dew to be an energy drink because it had, like, I don't know, 70 milligrams of caffeine in it or something. It is not an energy drink. It is just a very sugary, um, caffeinated soda. And at the time, I remember this one guy commented on my, my video, and, like, he, he was trying to get in a full-blown argument, uh, about the Mountain Dew. And I remember, like, this guy was a Mountain Dew fanatic. I mean, I remember I checked his channel out, and all his videos were just him showing off this refrigerator full of Mountain Dew that he had just stockpiled up, like there was going to be a, a, a nuclear... Um, apocalypse or something, and he was just, you know, stocking up on Mountain Dew for the end times or something. So, uh, yeah, that was, uh, I remember that. And that does also bring in the question where someone was asking, what do you wonder about your, your audience? At the time, when I, um, when I first started out the reviews, I was just trying to think, like, who even, um, who even watches the, uh, you know, these videos, these, uh, reviews or whatever. Uh, but nowadays, I, I realize pretty much there is no one specific audience. You literally have people just across the entire board, uh, that watch this channel, and, uh, that I, that I realize. Uh, anyway, we have, uh, a few more, a few more, let's see, a few more super chats to get to. And then considering the fact that we've almost, almost kept this going for three hours, um, we'll probably wrap things up in a little bit. Uh, so we got that. Uh, Logan is checking in. Uh, how do you feel about Nintendo games? Uh, Nintendo doesn't bother me. As I said, I really don't play video games very much anymore. Nowadays, I just usually play the um, eight ball pool on the, uh, on the mini clip. That's what I play most of the time. I usually just go with the, the tournaments, you know, and and play that. And, uh, you know, the, uh, yeah, the mini clip eight ball pool is where it's at. But, yeah, I mean, the uh, Nintendo, don't, don't have a problem with them. Um, favorite chicken nuggets. This comes from Taylor. He says, uh, McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King. That's tough. Lately, I've been getting the chicken McNuggets from um, McDonald's. I will tell you this. The one thing that I really, really wish was that the, uh, what is it? The spicy chicken nuggets. You remember that from, from Wendy's? Man, I wished I had those things again. I mean, I, I wish. I wish they still had the spicy chicken nuggets from, uh, from, yeah, from Wendy's. I mean... I wish they still had those. That's that's what I gotta tell you. Uh, all right, what else do we have? Um, Nico Angel says, uh, "Eat something." Live food review. And um, let's see, Kathleen checking in says, "Please review the cloud macchiato from Starbucks." So thank you for the suggestion there. I'll definitely note that one down. And um, let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to pronounce this. Migs, Mixful. What's your favorite movie? Love your channel, bruh. I haven't been watching a ton of movies lately, but, uh, you know, the, uh, I haven't been watching a ton of them, though. That's the thing. I've been doing some reading, and I've been watching a movie here or there. Lots of music listening, though. That I, that, that I gotta tell you. Um, but anyway, there was, uh, what was the one question? Oh, you know, yeah, he... There is one thing that I will eat for the heck of it since you reminded me. I'll eat another Oreo cookie. And I'll do the usual. I say this as an advance, advance warning. If you've been watching this already, you know what's coming with the, uh, with this Oreo. You know what's going to happen. I'm going to eat it, but you know, so just prepare yourself. All right? You ready? 
All right, just needed to needed to let you know. Yeah, I saw the I saw the comment there. It said please go back to your roots reviewing the the energy drinks. I might review an energy drink at some point. One drink that I definitely want to uh even re-review is the um what is that? <clears throat> the Monster Zero Ultra whatever the, the you know the one that's in the white can. I do want to give that one a review. All right, so I think I'm going to, um, oh, Jeremiah, he said, uh, how do you maintain that peak physical figure? Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm always hitting the gym, uh, usually five to eight hours a day there. I can bench 500 pounds and, uh, can't even say that with a straight face. I'm always hitting up the gym, always there. You know, that's, I, I, I probably, I spend, I spend so much time there. You know, I, I, I work it all out. You better believe it. So that's why I'm you know, always there, always at the gym, maintaining this, uh, as you can see, this, this bodybuilder-esque physique. All right, so with that being said, there's one last topic I'm going to touch upon, and then I think I'm going to uh, end, the, uh, end the stream, you know, wind, uh, wind things down a little bit. Someone was uh, asking me, what are, uh, what are my thoughts on... On Mars, you know, do you think do you think people are ever going to go to Mars? What do, what do you think about that? I personally think because this is an interesting thing. Humans are going to land on Mars. I be, I believe that. You know, I, I mean, I think that's gonna I think that's gonna happen at some point. It all is a matter of when. Now, I remember years ago. I mean, it wasn't really that long ago, right? I think it was called like Mars One or something. And some people were actually optimistic about this. They were saying, oh, this is going to be the revolution. This is going to revolutionize it, right? That they're going to um, get people on Mars in the uh, in the 2020s, right? And then it turned out that they actually filed for bankruptcy and that it's done. That, that this is not happening. And, I mean, when you really think about it, their business model just wasn't going to work. I mean, like, with, with Mars One, I think that's what it was called, right? Where they said, um, we're going to try to make it a reality TV show. And somehow make it, like, reality TV. And then, um, I don't know, for some for some odd reason, that following, the, the I guess, the potential astronauts around and through their whatever... Is uh, is gonna somehow fund the, sh the 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 whole the whole thing? That makes no that makes no sense whatsoever as a business model. Television itself is dying, and a reality TV show is. I just don't see that as a sufficient way of funding a, a, a space program of all things. Plus, I mean, the problem is, is that astronauts, or at least the candidates for astronauts need to be, in my opinion anyway, very serious people. Not necessarily the type that you would see on on a reality show. Like, what what, what were they going to do? Would they just, you know, get them all in the, the room and just booze them all up and try and... Would, would they have romantic interests? Would they try and have fights? Uh, you know? Like, it's just one of those things. I just don't understand, even from a reality TV thing, um, how they would even think to fi finance it through there. So, that's just the one thing that gets me. Uh, but if, if you ask me, I think with the current resources we have even today, we could probably get someone to Mars right now. Problem is, they're not coming back. 
and there's that chance they might not even make it to Mars. So I think with the resources at our disposal currently, we might be able to get someone to Mars right now. But I think it'd be a one-way one -way trip. At the same time, though, people have to realize how far away Mars is compared to just, say, the moon or all of that. And also to uh, Paul, uh, when's the day in the life uh, 2019 video? That's coming out in, uh, in June. June of 2019. Always comes out in June. Remember that. It is a yearly publication, and uh, it always comes out in the month of June. And uh, trust me, the way this year is going by uh, so quickly, it's going to be here before you know it. So don't even worry. Uh, you know, it's just flying by, man. It's it's just going by. Um, all right, so otherwise, uh, not too many other people checking in. Uh, Strawberry Sarah checking in. Thank you for the support. Um, and uh, other than that, really, I think that's all that we have. We've been at this uh, live stream for, uh, gosh, about close to three hours at this point. Close to, um, yeah, th three hours. And uh, I think at that point, I'm going to call it a night. We've been at it for a while. Uh, this is, of course, the Review Bra Saturday night live stream. And I think I'm going to end this before midnight Eastern, so it still uh, ends up being on a Saturday night. And, uh, yeah, this was just a Saturday night live stream. Miscellaneous talk, you know, just talking about eh, just random topics, you know, totally random topics. Uh, some question, answer, all that good stuff. And, uh, yeah, had a lot of fun doing this. Uh, thank you all for just checking in, for watching this stream. Uh, whether you've been here for the whole duration, you know, for like, for the whole, the whole three hours, or if you've just been here for five seconds and you're wondering, uh, what, what, what's going on. Um, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for, for watching, for, uh, <laughs> listening in, you know, whatever it might be. Uh, on one one final note, I just want to, you know, promote the usual, right? On a final note, of course, I've been mentioning it so many times. If you liked what you saw right now, you might not have the video aspect, but if you liked hearing about the, the random topics and something uh, other than just the food reviews, like I've been saying, give it a shot. Check out the podcast. You can find it youtube.com slash VORW podcast. You can find it on SoundCloud soundcloud.com slash v-o-r-w and on all the other platforms on spotify on TuneIn, on stitcher pocket Casts, itunes just search up v-o-r-w those four letters it's all that you need you're gonna find my show uh it's audio only at this point though it might end up you know being a you know video like you see a lot of the podcasts and uh yeah otherwise um it's just a good, varied show, and, uh, I mean, I just think it'll make for an interesting listen. Lots of topics, lots of perspective, and like I said, if you like what you were seeing right now, it's kind of like that. I just touch upon a lot of things that are not uh, food-related. So check it out, and like I even say, hey, if, you, if, you, if it puts you to sleep, more power to you, and I'm glad that it, uh, it helps you get to sleep. So really, make sure you check it out, and... Uh, you know, even though shortwave is on the decline, I still broadcast on shortwave. There's still stuff to listen to on shortwave. I recommend uh, looking it up. Look up, you know, shortwave radio. And if you have any questions about shortwave, I'm always happy to answer them. Uh, you can send me an email, vorwinfo at gmail.com. So with that, thank you for watching and listening. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, with that, remember, at 2 a.m., uh, the clocks go forward one hour. Daylight saving time uh, begins. And uh, with that, yeah, I'll see you in a couple days with uh, another video on the YouTube. Have a pleasant Sunday. And uh, just remember, this Thursday, new podcast coming out. So until then, thank you, take care, and uh, have a pleasant evening. And that's all that I got.